is clear. The sun is shining. It must be Sunday afternoon baseball. Neil Shawasra joined with, as always with our pal, Garrett Matthews. Welcome to Harold and Kendall's and Cardinals Baseball on Cable 14. Jarrett, the Barry Baycats in town this afternoon to take on your Cardinals. You've lost three in a row. Yep, that's right. Uh, Hamilton Cardinals, unfortunately, suffering their longest losing streak of the season so far. That's the first time all year they've lost three straight, looking to get back on track. A pair of games coming up this week, including today uh, against the Barry Baycats. 16-7 and seven record. Pretty impressive what they've been able to do over the second half of this early part of the season. Indeed they have, but the Bearcats have definitely been the story of the second half, well, the, the start of the second half as we welcome you into the bird's nest here at Bernie Arbor Stadium. I'm Neil Shawasa. Like I said, Jarrett Matthews is to my right here. As we'll get underway here, Colby Ring will take the mound here for the Cardinals as they go looking to end their losing streak. Yeah, last few Sundays uh, we saw uh, Jason Wilbur on the mound, but uh, with the rain out the other night, Colby Ring set to make the start here. Didn't have the best outing his last time out against the Maple Leafs at Christie Pitts. Of course, very tough place to pitch in general. Christie Pitts on a Sunday afternoon is not the family-friendly place, that's for sure. As Noel McGarry Dowell fouls the second to pitch off to even the count. This is the fifth time these two teams have squared off this season. Each team taking two of those. Barry actually took the latest of those two matchups, but uh, it's been very close in terms of run differential. Each team scoring just over 20 runs. Exactly. Noel McGarry Doyle, the first batter to face Colby Ring, and that one miss is in there for a strike. And Noel McGarry Doyle behind the count at one and two. McGarry Doyle batting 319 on the season, two home runs, 14 RBIs for the Lilioff man for the Bearcats. Of course, the Baycats winning yesterday 5 to 4 over the London Majors in what was absolutely a, an absolute pitcher's duel for the first six, seven innings, that's for sure. Owen Boone went head to head with Frank Garces. So if you didn't get a chance to watch that broadcast, we definitely invite you to go over to the Baycats TV and catch the replay on over there. Yeah, no, no pitcher so far in the IBL has pitched a complete game this season, but I wouldn't be surprised if one of those two guys end up with one before it's all said and done. That one's caught down the third base line by Josh Niles for out number one. Ring gets his first one out. Kenis Idro will be the batter now. He's batting 270, one home run, 13 RBIs on the early season so far. He's definitely settled into the center field role for these Baycats, which allowed Starling Rodriguez to take over at short. E. Joe, of course, a tough customer on the base pass. Third in the IBL in steals with 13. Strike on the outside part of the plate. And Ring getting ahead in the count again, like he usually does most times out here on the mound here in Hamilton. Colby Ring with a 5.79 ERA in his six starts. Pitched 28 innings in total with 27 strikeouts and 19 walks. That one misses inside to even the count at one and one. Fouled away. The even. The count now one and two. This ring just trying to pound the strikes down early here and get get the defense do the job behind him. Defense, of course, on the shoulder fell in the left. Keys in the center field. Dun Tyler Duncan is in right field. Josh now is at third base. Brendan Nicholson at short. That one misses inside for bulk. Charlie Towler is at second base and Tanner Rempel at first. Of course, Luis Bernardo behind the plate trying to keep Mr. Ring in the strike zone. Now with a two and two count. Two two pitch. Line down the left field line, but foul. And we'll do it again at two and two. Cardinals on a three game slide, as we mentioned, but overall this season has been a huge success compared to last year. They're already up over their total wins from last season. It's great to see that they've definitely turned things around there. Of course, three teams now in the IBL as of this morning have equaled or bettered their Wind totals from last year. That one's fouled down the right field line out of play. And the yeah, count remained two and two. I don't believe there was any uh, Hamilton Cardinals that made the all-star team last year, but certainly a couple bids in there for sure this year. Well, Tyler Duncan was very close last year mm -hmm. in the balloting and everything. I was just missed out because there were some better guys that had great series in the outfield. Strike three called, and Ejo doesn't like it. But Colby Ring picks up his first strike out of the afternoon, and there's two away. 
Hamilton holds an eight and four record at home compared to Barry's eight and three road record. So it's going to be interesting to see what kind of how this shakes out today. Well, the Big Cats will definitely be having a lot more home games the second half of the season. Of course, they had they started their season with first the first four home ga games that were at home, and then after that they were on the road for an awful while. Just a, a, a an odd Saturday afternoon game at home. This will get back to the Thursdays and Saturdays very shortly. This one's chopped foul by Starlin Rodriguez. Rodriguez is up the average to 338 on the year. Six home runs, 18 RBIs. And, of course, like we mentioned off the top, he's now playing shortstop for the Baycats, which seems like he's a very much a, more of a natural shortstop than he is an outfielder. But he's a great defender when he's in the outfield as well. That one misses outside, even the count at 1-1. One one. Ring looked like he's a lot more settled in here than he was at Christy Pitts last Sunday. Like you mentioned, only two innings pitched last game. Give him a grand slam in the first inning and then another run in the second. Four walks, so he definitely seems to be a little more control today. That one sails high. It's 2-1 and one now. Ryan Rios waits on deck. Always dangerous at the plate. 2-1 is lined to shortstop. Nicholson up with it. He throws to first in time, and they get... The Cardinals get the Baycats in order. Three up, three down. You're watching Cardinals baseball on cable 14. Great start there for Colby Ring and the Cardinals. Looking very sound on defense already. A little bit of movement around the infield. As we'll take it down to the field with Emily Thompson. It is, of course, 90s day at the ballpark today, Neil. What are your favorite uh, my things favorite from the 90s? Decade. Movies, TV shows, music? Some of my favorite movies in the 90s. Well, see, that, was, that was my perfect years. I was fin I finished high school in 1996, so you got a few years on you here, Mr. Jarrett. But, yes. Yeah, yeah. I never saw the 90s. I was born in 2000, <laughs> so. I just remember a lot of action movies, a lot of Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, a lot of Sylvester Stallone movies, Tango and Cash, True Lies. A lot, of, a lot of the, die, of course, Die Hard, the Christmas movie. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. Bruce Willis is probably still going to regret that one for the rest of his life, but still, <laughs> yeah. he doesn't want to call that one a Christmas movie. But, hey, with Convention Densely, it actually came out this, this week in July of that, I think it was, I want to say it was 93, 94, somewhere in there. But I remember seeing it, not when it went on, obviously, in the movie theaters, because I think it was rated R, and I wasn't old enough yet, <laughs> so that's okay. Yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, 90s country, some uh, Alan yeah. Jackson or some George Strait or... Brooks and Dunn, that sort of stuff. Well, I just remember, like, we used to make mixtapes. Oh, yeah. Because, well, obviously, you guys don't, you, know, you guys you guys grew up in the CD era. We used to make mm -hmm. mixtapes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we'd have, like, the, all these crazy heads, like Alanis Morissette and everything else. And as you got older, you always just think, okay, this song would come on your mixtape, would come right after, and you'd always be shocked when it actually did happen. It was like, yeah. hey, somebody had the same idea. Evan Souls is getting loose here for the Barry Baycats. What can you tell us about Mr. Evan Souls? Well, so far this season, he's made two starts, appeared in 12 games, though. His ERA getting up there a little bit, 798 on the season. Still able to strike out lots of batters. He's got 32 strikeouts in his 29 and one innings pitch. So not ideal, but uh, certainly a serviceable pitcher for the Baycats. We'll see how he fares here today. The defense behind Mr. Souls. Nolan McGarry Doyle in left field. Kenise Ejo in center. Kyle Mavis in right. Hayden Jaco at third. Starlin Rodriguez at shortstop. Adam Ott at second base. And Owen Jansen at first. Tyler Plumpton does the catching for Evan Souls as we get back in the order. And leadoff hitter Brandon Nicholson. First pitch misses from Souls for ball number one. Nicholson batting 222 on the season since joining the Cardinals via the trade route. One home run, three RBIs. So he hits this one to center field deep. Center fielder is going back. Ejo is still going back. He's going to make the one-handed grab in center field to retire Nicholson for the first out of the ball game. Yeah, Ejo using all of his speed there. He needed every step to get to that ball. Well hit by Nicholson, but just about two feet shy of a double. Clayton Keyes will be the batter now, batting 316 on the season. Three home runs, 23 RBRs. Of course, I was mentioning him on the Kitchener broadcast, and lo and behold, it said Clayton Keyes hadn't hit a home run in a while, so next thing you know, very next pitch, it smashed over the fence. And Hayden Key, or sorry, Clayton Keyes had his third home run of the season. Takes ball one high from Souls. Keyes be filed by Tyler Duncan, Luis Bernardo, Josh Niles, Dennis Day Banning, Jordan Schulfan, Tyler Rempel, and Charlie Towers is batting the nine hole at second base. 
Keys tied for the league lead in extra base hits. T tied, of course, with Tyler Duncan with 16. 12 doubles on the season for Keys. I don't know, bad thing to have two guys up the, in the your lineup to, battling for extra base hits. Yeah, definitely not. And that one's in there for a strike. Keys didn't like the call. It's 2-1 and as Souls battles back here. There's another statistic that he's near the top of, and I'm not going to mention it unless it yeah, happens. Yeah, it winds up with, a, ends with an out Yeah, as he swings and misses here. Of course, the Cardinals, as it seemed, leading the league in one of the, the, the category you don't want to lead the, the category, and that is strikeouts. 248 so far on the season for the Cardinals. The Big Cats come in with 206. Ball sails high. It's now 3-2 and two here. As Souls finds himself in an early jam trying to get out of this one. The Cardinals as a team just have to be a little more patient at the plate, not so aggressive chasing pitches out of the strike zone. Strike three called, and there's another strikeout for Keys. He yeah, didn't that like that call. borderline pitch, but you can't, uh, can't let that buy you with two strikes. That'll bring up Tyler Duncan, who's set some uh, new milestones this week as well. Duncan collected his 100th career hit in the IBL earlier this weekend. Of course, Thursday in Kitchener, I believe it was the second home run he hit in his second at bat. That was lucky number 100. Duncan's up the average to 389 home runs, 30 RBIs. He's tied Luis Bernardo for the team lead now in RBIs. Yeah, three home runs in his last two games. Another streak for him. He's had a couple of ga uh, pairs of games like that where he's had multiple home runs. Played umpire Mike Kinnear warning the Cardinals bench are ready to knock it off about the strike calls. Yeah, I saw Clayton Keyes heading towards the bench after that strikeout signal to Tyler Duncan that that pitch was a good foot or two off the plate, so he definitely didn't like it. Well, we got a wide strike zone this afternoon. Of course, the heat and the sun right on everybody out here again. So hopefully everything else. Preston Hughes is at third base. I think Scott could spell it rounding out the umpiring team is at first. Duncan hits that one through the hole for a base hit, and the Cardinals have got a base runner with two away. Well placed and uh, well hit ball there to the right side. That was a heater, no chance for the first base. Tyler Duncan must be seeing baseballs the size of, the size of watermelons right now. Absolutely. He doesn't seem Seems to be like missing much at all. Smacking them all over the ballpark. Luis Bernardo now the batter, 313 on the year for the catcher. Three home runs, 30 RBIs, as we mentioned a batter ago. Yeah, third Tied. in the IBL in RBIs with 30. Souls from the stretch. Glances over at Duncan through his shoulder. First pitch misses outside to Bernardo. It's 1-0. and Bernardo sporting some new uh, orange batting gloves. Not sure if I've seen those yet. No, I hadn't seen those in Hamilton. I mean, in Kitchener, that's for sure. So yeah, maybe maybe he's just changing up his luck. Yeah, he's matching his orange elbow pad as well there. Ball misses high, and Plumpton's going to have a go have a conversation with Souls here. They don't seem to be on the same page to this point. You mentioned a little bit of chatter there from the Cardinals' bullpen. We've already had some dramatics across the IBL this week with in terms of umpiring and rulings and all that stuff. What can yeah, you say about well, that? Yeah, well, exactly. Well, we'll get into that a little more in, the, in the, the half inning here. But, of course, the Barry Baycats squeaked out a win yesterday against the London Majors. Of course, they had a little bit of controversy. We'll talk about it at the end of the half of this frame here because we have a little more time. And I would like to kill, fill some content between innings as well. But yes, it was a controversial call that caused the the end of that ball game, or directly resulted in the end of the ball game. This one is driven into center field. Rodriguez underneath, and he'll make the catch, and the inning's over. Cardinals strand Tyler Duncan at first. No score after one. You're watching Hamilton Cardinals baseball on cable, cable 14. Yeah, so Tyler Duncan getting his hit there. That actually extends his home hit streak, the longest in the IBL, to 13. Told you Tyler Duncan is definitely on a roll here. Getting back to what we were alluding to in that last half inning is, of course, the Barry Baycats in London Majors went into the ninth inning tied four piece. The Majors pitcher, unfortunately, walked the bases loaded. Manager Rupert Tanner that tried to go out and retrieve his pitcher and was told by the plate umpire only he's only faced two batters. So he made the, he made the pitcher go back out there to finish the inning, to at least finish the next batter. Unfortunately, the next batter walked, and that was the ball game. So and it turns out the IBL does not enforce the three-batter the three batter rule right now. So that's just it's very interesting. Not sure how they're going to proceed from that one, but 
As far as I know, we did not protest the game at that time, so I don't know if he's allowed to protest it now. Yeah, it's an interesting situation. I think both you and I both thought that uh, that was a rule and that had well, been adopted I thought, I, when the MLB did. But I thought, I thought it got adopted at the same time because I remember we having the conversations when I was in a different role with a ball club in this league, and it was just like, okay, now it's not. So, okay. But I guess it was pointed out a couple of times by Thomas West and Chris Lazar and everybody else on social media last night while I was enjoying the wedding beverages with, all, with my friends and everything else. Yep. And it was just like, yeah, no. The league doesn't have the rules, so I emailed Herb around this morning, and he said, yeah, I confirmed it. The rule's not adopted. So there's no three-batter rule in this league. You can pitch, pull a pitcher after he's faced one batter. You're not liking what he's doing out there. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting to see how they rule that one. Whether they're going to have to replay the end of that game, or would, it's, it's hard to say. Like there was nobody out either, so if you replay it, it's like what's to say the next pitch he throws is going to be a wild pitch, anyways. Yeah, ball game still ends. Yeah, or maybe you get out of it, and you have to have to go back to the tenth inning, and then you have to run at second base. Certainly something you don't see every day. Exactly. Ryan Rios will be the batter. Of course, we didn't play pink fluffy unicorns dancing on rainbows for Rio, but. He was joking last week when I was in Barry and the, the Cardinals were up there. He's like, yeah, he pulled his, pulled his uh, iPod out of there, I guess, and said, no, the Cardinals don't get any music unless they want Pike Fluffy Unicorns dancing on rainbows. <laughs> I told you, right, I'd mention it, so to don't hate the man for following up on what I promised. As Rio swings at the first offer, and this one's popped up high in the air. Bernardo's got the, got the glove under it, and he's trying to make the catch. And Rio's retired for out number one. Wow, definitely not an easy play there for Luis. Looking over his back and did a whole 360 there before well, catching exactly, that ball. The sun is probably right directly above our heads here too, so yeah, not an easy sky to begin with. Also a little bit of wind headed towards center, so that kind of pushed it back closer to being in play actually. It would have been interesting had he missed it and it landed on the foul line and well, exactly. rolled in play. Rio doesn't run that well, but he would have definitely tried to wait his mad sprint down to first. That's the case. Adam Odd now the batter who's batting 377 on the season. Three home runs, 17 RBIs. Of course, he gets hot. He goes in hot in the cold streaks, and he definitely one of the hotter hitters for the Baycats right now. He takes ball one here from Colby Ring. No score here in the top of the second inning. If you're just joining us on Cable 14, thank you so much for tuning in with us. And a huge shout out to the Baycat fans watching throughout Cottage Country and around Ontario as well. Thank you for tuning us in. Colby Ring with a good solid top of the first. Three up, three down, and he's got one away now. Struggling oh, to find the zone here. Here to odd. Just like, like, like everything seems to be missing up here for Ring so far. And odd, a little shorter in stature than some, some of the other guys in this team, so it's definitely not strikes. Four straight balls, and odd takes the courtesy pass down to first with one away. That will bring up Hayden Jaco, the third baseman who's batting 250 with one home run and six RBIs so far for the Baycats. Bring up 21 pitches into the second inning here. He usually throws about between 85 to 90 to 100 pitches. Hopefully we'll keep him through that area. and Hopefully that will get him through six or seven in a position to get a win. Of course, he's got a two and three record on the season now. This one's hit by Jayco down the right field line. Rimple makes the catch for out number two. Tanner Rimple with the catch and in foul territory and a quick wise decision to throw it to the second baseman to keep that one in play. Well, that was not an easy play at all there for Tanner Rimple. I almost said Josh Niles out of habit, but uh, well, Rimple over here. there I was like, I go, oh, yeah, Rimple, he's, Niles is over there. It's Rimple today. Of course, Rimple yeah. just got back in the lineup last weekend. After he was battling a little bit of a shoulder injury, so as yeah. he landed up there too, I was like, oh man, the back of my head, please don't tell me to hit the right, the same shoulder as hurt before. Yeah, he was kind of tracking that one backwards, fighting the sun, able to lunge out and grab it at the last second. Kyle Mavis now the batter. He's batting 200 in the year. No home runs, four RBIs. Throw over from ring to keep Adam Odd close at first. A lot of rainouts in the IBL, a lot of rescheduling going on throughout the league as well. Yeah, it's funny. We didn't see any rainouts for the first, what, month and a half of the season. And then the last two weeks, it's been like at least at least one or two a week. Yeah. Seems like we, every time we have three games on a day, maybe one of them gets played. Exactly. 
or if you're lucky enough, you get the, you get the, you go to the right one. Yeah. And don't come all the way back from London <laughs> the handed. Like the Cardinals and I did as well. I was scheduled to be in the game Friday night in London. That one's fouled away. That one has not been rescheduled yet. But the London Major, I'll be back in London on Wednesday. The London Majors taking on, I can't even, uh, the Welland Jackfish actually. That one was supposed to go last Tuesday. Got bumped to this Wednesday. Adam Odd being held on first by Rempel. Odd three stolen bases on the season. One one pitch to Mays, misses inside. It's two and one. Colby Ring just doesn't seem he's been, been able to settle himself down this inning so far. Everything's missing high, maybe the release points off. Two one pitch. He has misses high for a ball. Bernardo lifts the mask up and throws a strike back to Ring. Yeah, three of the five outs recorded so five by the, far by the Cardinals have been caught in foul territory. Well, maybe Ring just got to make them, let them hit it here and let the defense do the job here. Three-one pitch on its way momentarily as Ring sets in for the sign. Swung on and missed. It's three and two. Maves took a good hack at that one. Bernardo asking for his defense to play behind the base. On this 3-2 pitch. Odd uh, will get a bigger lead out here as Rumpel playing way behind him. 3-2 pitch is in there, but misses low, and that's another ball, and another walk. Baycats have got runners at first and second now with two away. For Tyler Plumpton. Yeah, Colby Ring struggling a little bit to find the zone here early. We mentioned he had a rough start uh, his last time out in Toronto. Before that, though, pretty solid. Had gone at least five innings in his first four starts. Yep. So definitely positive. Just trying to get back on the right track here today. When Ring gets in trouble, the, the, wall, the, the walk count gets up in a hurry. Of course, last week he only lasted two innings because he had four walks. Tonight he's now up to 20 walks on the season. With He's got a pair of them in this inning. When he's on, he's definitely getting ahead of batters with strikes. And pounding the zone today, it looks like everything is up, though. The first pitch to Plumpton on its way. Outside for ball number one. Bernardo tried to bring that one in, but it was just a little too far on the outside part of the plate. Yeah, Ring trying to paint the outside. That call's been a strike a few times already. Plumpton three for 10 on the season, batting 300. No home runs, no RBIs. One's fouled away, and the count's one and one. You mentioned all the rain that we've gotten. The one positive of that is the bright green grass we hear now. Bright green that, grass, uh, and I went. Got, I was away. We were away yesterday. I came went back and looked at my vegetable garden this morning before I left for the ball game, and I was just like, "Oh goodness, I'm gonna have to start harvesting some things pretty fast here." I got beans. I got peas. I've got tomatoes. I got a zucchini. They're about almost the size of a foot long sub almost now. 1-1 one, one pitch. He just hit down the ground to third base. They're going to have to go across the diamond, and they will. Niles to, to Rempel, and the inning is over. Baycats strand a pair of runners. We're still scoreless as we head to the home half of the second inning. You're watching Hamilton Cardinals baseball on Cable 14. That play looked very effortless for the third baseman, Josh Niles, there. Didn't even think about it. Well, of course, it's got to be a little bit of an adjustment for Niles, who's used to be on the receiving end of those. Exactly. Typically, uh, Lane Renault over there at third base. Getting the day off today. Yep. So what year were you born? 2000. 2000, so you missed yep. the 90s by a year. Yeah. So yep. yeah, you missed, you quite, missed the quite, I want to say the interesting decade just because when I was in high school, it was a lot of dance music. The grunge scene, the, the Seattle grunge scene was in full effect too, so you have bands like Pearl Jam, Nirvana, stuff like that, and just like the movies, like I said, there were a lot of action movies, a lot of comedies. Adam Sandler was big. Jim Carrey was big back then, too. So you have the, the mask. You have Liar Liar from Jim Carrey. Yep. The cable guy, which really set his career. That's what he made his first $20 million movie, too. So it's like, I, was a mat I remember thinking back to going, That's they're actually right. paying that guy to be $20 million just to make fun of things on, <laughs> on, a, on film. Yeah, solid decade for uh, media. That's for sure. Uh, 
Definitely a good good decade for the rap genre as well and country yeah. and you name it really. Well, exactly. It's just a, it was such a different thing. Much music when it was in its heyday as well. So you'd have the dance mix '91, '92, '93. Yeah. All those all those CDs and cassettes and everything else that came out as well. And of course, the school dances were like just was, like uh, giant rave parties almost. I was uh, doing a little research to bring it back to baseball. This day in 1990, the Toronto Blue Jays defeated the Seattle Mariners. Five to four, I believe it was, and uh, Jimmy Key got the win. Tom Henke with the save. Nice. So pretty much what you'd expect from. Oh uh, yeah. Well, back in those days, it was Mark Ar Mark Arcorn, Jimmy Key, then it was Dwayne Ward and Tom Henke. Those guys. Once you got the baseball to those guys, and you're a Blue Jay fan, you know, you were in good hands. Most Absolutely. of those nights, those things were just shut down. Of course, the Blue Jays winning the World Series in '92 and '93, and we haven't been back to the World Series since. So. I'm telling it like back in my day when we once used to win World Series. Yeah. But yeah, we take the transistor radio to high school, him in a backpack, the English teacher, Mr. Nagy, God bless him, was a Jays fan as well, so he didn't mind me if they bring it and brought the radio out, and put the headset on while I was doing my English assignments. I'd be the only kid walking up the street with a little radio in the backpack listening to the Jays game. Somebody stopped over, hey, what's the score in the Jays game? I was like, doesn't your radio work? Yeah. It's like, no, it doesn't. It's an eight track. Yeah, they got close tw twice since then, but I uh, haven't been able to get back. So it's Josh Niles in the box to lead things off here for Niles the Cardinals. Take, Niles takes ball one from Evan Souls. No score here in the bottom of the second inning. Thank you so much for tuning us in on Cable 14. I'm Neil Shirwaswa. Jarrett Matthews is doing the color commentary this afternoon. Our pleasure to be with you this afternoon. Absolutely. Another beautiful Sunday afternoon. Another hot one as well. We've got the little air conditioning yeah, unit little up cool here chill thing, the Mom took care of us and got us one of those Cool Max or Cool Chills, whatever those things are from the showcase uh, online shopping stores or on, it's seen on TV stores. So we're giving it a shot. I'm not sure if I'm sold on it yet, but it's still early. Certainly can't hurt. That one misses low for a ball, and the count is 2-2. Two two. Niles will be followed by Dennis Day Banning and Jordan Schulenfeld in the order. Niles hits this one to center field. Ejo charging hard. He'll be underneath this one for the grab. And there's one away. That's too bad there for Niles. He waited on that pitch nicely, hit it up the middle, but just unfortunately right to the center fielder. He just got a little too far underneath that one and hung it up in the air a little too long as the flag is. I don't really see the, the wind, which way the wind's going today. So Dennis DeBanning will be the batter now. 312 on the air, three home runs, 12 RBIs. Another one of these guys, I said, hey, he hadn't had a home run in a while. And lo and behold, Thursday night, he cranked one over the, over the fence in Jack Couch Park. Of course, the Cardinals led that ball game 8-2 at one point, unfortunately falling to the Anthem. The, the Panthers 14-11. Yeah, Panthers definitely one of the few teams where you can score 11 runs and probably still lose the game. Well, especially at Jack Couch Park where the motto is, and I mean it every day, is no lead is safe in that ballpark. doesn't matter which team you play for. What one is one count to the Banning. His chop to the third baseman. Jayco up with it. He'll throw to first in time, and the Banning's retired for out number two. Another very um, unfortunately placed ball there. It took a perfect hop from about four feet past the plate and all the way up and into his glove. He didn't even have to move his feet. Well, Jake will just have to wait for the bounce to come down his way into his glove. And the Banning, who runs pretty well, still was out by a few feet. And Jordan Schulfeld will be Schulfan will be the batter now. Yeah, very interested to see how he fares in the box. Pitched, of course, the other night for the Cardinals. Did fairly did fairly well in that game. Left He's with the lead. Unfortunately, the, the bullpen just let him down there. Three for nine so far with the Cardinals. Two games. He likes to swing the bat as well as he does pitch pretty well. 1-0 mm -hmm. count is on there. That one's in there for a strike, and Souls evens the count at 1-1. One one. Talk about the IBL standings in the next break. Yeah, certainly interesting how it's shaken up since the first few weeks. Now it's definitely a log jam in the middle, and the top two are definitely pulling uh, pulling away further and further. As that one's fouled off by Schulfend, and it's a one and two count. So okay. it's in from the sign, the stretch, one two pitch on its way. Misses high and outside for ball two. That outside pitch that we're getting in the first inning is definitely not happening in the second inning here. Yeah, it's tightened up a side. little bit. Time called there by Shula Fant. Just want to make sure.
sure my, radio, my phone is on silent mode because we're getting all those NFL Watch updates. Outside, that one's called for strike three. Schoenfeld does not like the call. Played off our walking away because he doesn't want to have a conversation here. We're scoreless after two. You're watching Hamilton Cardinals baseball on cable 14. Yeah, you mentioned it was uh, Mike Kinnear behind the plate. That's right. Yes, it is. Yeah, first time I think he's been uh, behind the plate all season here at Bernie Arbor. Yep, I'm pretty sure you're right. I don't remember seeing him behind the plate, but I know he has done the bases a couple times in a couple other ball games I've been at. I actually remember having him umpire a few of my games when I was playing hard ball a few years back. Now, so your favorite and my favorite is this home, the second inning of the Swish LA. Kids run the bases that the leadoff guy did not even touch the first base. He just sprinted around it. And he's not even touching oh, he the doesn't. base. He's just making the inside lane here. You think he was a, a jockey somewhere? Yeah, he must be a football player or a hockey player. Not quite got the rules down straight. Yep. Can we get thanks to our sponsor, Swish LA, for bringing you kids run the bases in the second inning. Swish LA, always so good for so little. I don't want chicken for dinner tonight now. I don't mean to jinx it, but we haven't had anybody wipe out yet. Yeah, let's not wait. Let's, let, let's go injury free today. So why don't the one kid took a big face plant a few steps. Oh, Emily's going around the bases again. Emily Thompson does a, does a great job of this. So here she is running around with her high heels with a couple of girls in Mickey Minnie skirts. Minnie Mouse out attire is definitely an effect there. The polka dots and the red, the black tops. It's got to be a, almost equivalent to running a kilometer for some of these little kids with their short legs. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's a long way around those bases. Yep. Emily's going to need a foot massage after this one's over. Oh, Emily's picked up a straggler now. Yeah, he got distracted there by something in the dirt. Yep. Maybe it was a butterfly or something or something out there. Maybe somebody dropped some sunflower seeds or a bubble gum. Who knows? He touches the base, and Emily's well encouraging oh, him to finish up. Oh, he lost up. the shoe. Oh, he lost the shoe. It's a sandal. Sandal down. Emily's uh, abandoning the base path here as Luis Bernardo is just waving him off the field in the last three. Are going to make the finish off the race here. As the little guy is rocking to the tunes here as well. The rock version of the William Tell Overture. As the Cardinals will get loose here for the top of the third inning in a scoreless tie. I definitely like the 90s theme. It's definitely bringing back the old vibes. I'm going to have to dig out the 90s playlist for the kids tonight at the pool, that's for sure. Of course, all the kids will be here tonight. Cause of course, we did yeah. a wedding, so my kids were with, with their mom. But the older kids, were, who's my fiance's kids, were at a wedding with us. So everybody's in the house today, so it's one of the boyfriends. So you got to be at full pool tonight. Dad will be on the barbecue making some tasty treats and a little bit of 90s groove time. What can you tell us about uh, any 90s IBL? Well, see, what, I started in 1993. Uh, I got involved just by accident, really. It's because when I was I was volunteering with McLean, with McLean Cable Hunter Channel 8, I was doing my co-op placement that year in high school. So I got to know the people there. And we, they said, why don't you come do the baseball game on a Saturday for us? I'm like, sure. And I got to know the people that were running the baseball game and everything else. They were looking for volunteers. So I got roped into doing some stuff upstairs. I got to do, be, a, be a bat boy for half the year and worked the ball camp that summer as well. So, yeah, and then the, the, the inner county back in those days, we were still using aluminum bats. We didn't switch oh, wow. to wood until 1997. And when we made the switch, the numbers definitely changed. Like the, yeah, I can imagine. That would you know, be wild. The shots were few, few and far between, but my goodness, was aluminum bats. Guys are hitting them 500 feet without even thinking about it. Randy Curran for... For the Kissner Hanschler, who was definitely one of the, the big mainstays back then. Of course, Todd Barberman for the Toronto Maple Leafs, then the Guelph Royals. The Pietrasco brothers for the Panthers later on in those years as well. Yeah, I bet some wildly entertaining games, but uh, the shift definitely a safety uh, concern yeah, there. Yeah, well, exactly. Remember the uh, game, I guess, the, the deciding game in the IBL Finals on September 1st, the day Princess Diana died. Or I guess the day after. She died at midnight our time. So it was the day after. Lenny Melahays and the Kitchener Pan and the Guelph Royals. The Royals won it on a, a wild pitch. The top of the 11th or the bottom of the 11th inning. Oh. For the title. That was their last one. That was 97. Hmm. This one's grounded past Rempel at first base. And it gets past Charlie Towers as well. That would go. Scored a single, I'm sure. Yeah, heater on the ground there for Rempel, unable to handle it. Rempel was expecting a bounce. He didn't get it. It just kind of scooted off underneath him. 
Yeah, you can see him kind of crouching down low, waiting for... Noel McGarry will be the batter now as Owen Jansen leads off first with one, nobody away here. Colby Ring will look for a ground ball in this situation and just try to give his defense an opportunity to turn the double play. McGarry Doyle with a home run last night against the Maple Leafs. The, ba uh, the Majors, actually. Yep. Oh, sorry, yeah, it's just London. That one's flared out to Clayton Keyes in center field, and Noel McGarry Doyle as goes out. F eight goes your put out for out number one of the third inning. Kinesi Joe the batter. Now he struck out looking his last time up. Came to action batting 270. His average is going to drop a little bit after that strikeout. Down to 267 now. One on, one away here. Colby Ring working in a scoreless tie. Throws over to first. As Jansen dives back safely. Big Cats wearing their Navy tops with the gray pants today. I'm surprised they didn't go back with the old Navy ones like they had the last time they were here. I like that look. I yeah, especially against the white on white. Yeah. This one's fouled away. That could have just been maybe the guys don't like the color too. Maybe just thought it was a little mm -hmm. too softballish or something. Who knows? So we've pretty much seen all the Cardinals uniform combos this season. Which one's your favorite? I like the white at home. I'm a fan of the black one on the on the road, but it's that's hard to say. The gray one's nice too, but again, if you got three games in three days, you just want a clean jersey. Absolutely. Yeah, the red hats on the white uniforms look pretty sharp. They do. I was fully expecting them to dig out those throwbacks. They used to be in an 80s, a 90s day at the park, but unfortunately I guess they don't have them anymore, so. No. Emily is actually wearing one of them, I think, from last year. 1-1 one, one count here as Ring looks in for the sign from Bernardo. Ejo steps in the box, gets set. 1-1 one, one pitch on its way, runner going. Swung on and fouled away by Ejo. Hent run was definitely on on that pitch. And Jansen will have to go back to first with a now one and two count to Ejo. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't be surprised if we see over the next couple seasons some sort of third jersey come into play from Eric Spear, and he loves oh, I think he likes creative. to dabble things. I'd love to see him do like a, a wrestling type. I don't know what you could do, like a, not a... Not a spin, uh, something like that. I'd love to see him incorporate his two loves, wrestling and baseball. Yeah. That one's misses in there for a ball. It counts two and two. A flock of seagulls down the line. Not the not the rock band. The, the actual flock of seagulls is definitely making their way here to Burning Arbor. Yeah, somebody must have dropped a hot dog out there. They're swarming. Yeah, they're swarming about something. 2-2 two -two misses just outside. Bernardo had to reach a little too far out of the zone there, and now it's a throw full count here with one away. Mike Kinnear being a little bit stingy on the strike zone now after it was a little bit wider in the first, like we talked about. Of course, you have the umpire assigner down at first base, so maybe he's just feeling a little overjudged here. Mm -hmm. Can't be himself here, trying to be perfect. 3-2 pitch is lined in the air. Duncan gives this one chase, as does... Duncan makes the catch in right field on the warning track for out number two. Well, it made that look a lot easier than I think it really was. He kind of jogged over and it realized it was going pretty far. Had to jump and snag that one. Ejo retired F9 on the put out, and there's now two away for Stalin Rodriguez. Rodriguez grounded a 6-3 put out last time they end the inning. Duncan. Rodriguez is definitely dangerous here at the plate as well. Six home runs on the season, 18 RBIs. We're going to have to chase those birds away, I have the feeling. Hopefully nothing gets hit down there. Three uh, RBIs from Rodriguez last night. Of course, Randy Johnson in the late 90s <laughs> hit a bird joining that bat. Yeah. That's why his logo, Randy Johnson, of course, the big unit back in the day. Now he's a professional photographer. does a lot of NFL ball games. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. The bird, not so much. Not no, too busy the bird, these the days. The bird's not so happy, no. He the bird's was. probably in a bird sanctuary somewhere underground. Yeah. I always thought it was Photoshop, but I was like, no, it's not. It's like they have the highlights. You can look at on the MLB reels and everything else. You can look it up. Of course, in the 80s, Dave Winfield, when he was with the New York Yankees, actually hit a seagull at, at Old Exhibition Stadium. 
with a baseball throwing it back in the infield. They got charged after it. <laughs> well before your time. You've always known the, uh, the Sky Dome. You knew the mistake by the lake. Also yeah, that's right. Stadium. As Duncan oh. goes flat out for the catch. And he makes the grab, and he's over. Kobe Ring has got to go get Tyler Duncan a cold one, that's for sure. Yeah, We're wow. scoreless here at the, after two and a half. You're watching Hamilton Cardinals baseball on Cable 14. Tyler Duncan putting on an absolute clinic out there in right field in the last two outs, as he's done all season. Of course, Emily's doing love connections down there. I hope they never make me do this during the <laughs> yeah. broadcast. I'd feel so much pressure. This is a recipe for disaster, for yeah. sure. Uh, don't give any Emily ideas, though. She might actually force us to do it, because my fiance Jenny usually just pops around the, the dugout here. So, you know, maybe we'll game one of these days. Remember, we'll record it before the game so they can air it on the air here. Yeah. <laughs> what is Danielle's favorite TV show? If you know this, you guys are going to be very proud of it. Of course, there's a 200 ball games in the Inner County this afternoon as well. We'll get into that after everybody's done. Three, two, one. Speaking of the 1990s, what's a uh, little trivia question for you here today? Uh, what in 1992 was the top song on today, July 16th? Top song in 1992. Okay, so it wasn't Michael Jackson. I'm gonna say it was probably like some sort of dance tune. I'm probably thinking, might have been Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch, Good Vibrations. That's a good guess, but it's uh, Baby Got Back by Sir Mix-a-Lot. Oh, Sir mix there yeah. we go, I remember. I remember that tune. Oh my gosh, look at her butt. <laughs> and Solo's first offering here to Tanner Rempel misses high for ball number one. We're back underway. Bottom of the third inning, I'm Neil Scherwasser. That's Jared Matthews, my partner here to my right as well. Thank you so much for watching us on the game of 14. As Rempel takes that one inside, and he'll make his way down to first. Hey, for once it wasn't Clayton Keyes wearing that one on the backside. Yep, I was going to allude to that last time up, but I figured I'd wait until he actually gets hit because, you know, it's probably inevitable. It is inevitable. Let's play this ballpark. Charlie Towers will bat now with nobody, with one on and nobody away here in the Cardinals' third inning. Both teams have not to get, are yet to get our base runner past second base here. Charlie Towers making this uh, start at second base this afternoon. That was much the problem for a lot of teenagers back in the, in the, in the 90s, not getting past second base. Because <laughs> everybody's getting the, getting the good laugh on that one. My kids are probably going to watch this later and go, what the heck is he talking about? <laughs> to my younger kids, not till you're 16. To my little kids, keep your mouth shut, please. <laughs> Another call on the outside for a strike there. I don't think uh, any complaining is going to do them any good. No, I don't think so. I think it's just going to be if they, the umpire is going to have enough of it, he's going to start throwing names and throwing bodies. 1-1 mm -hmm. count to, to Charlie Towers. Souls throws over the first. Rimple dives back safely. As Jansen tries to fake throw. Rimple dives, held on to the base here. Rempel in his 12th game of the season, only one stolen base. Chris Towers looking to set to the top of the order back up here with a runner in scoring position. 
Swing and a miss. Towers now behind the count at one and two. Towers batting 222 on the season. One home run, three RBIs. Out of town scoreboard, the only other game underway right now. Well, and Jack fish up 1 0 in the top of the third inning at Christie Pitts in Toronto over the Maple Leafs. That one's flown out to left. A great job by Noel McGarry Doyle on the play. They throw in the first as Ripple had to dive back safely. Brandon Nicholson will be the batter now. He's 0 for 1. He hit and flew at the center field his last time up. Brandon Nicholson, a 90s baby. Early happy birthday to him, July 22nd, 1997. Next Saturday, same as my fiance Jenny. Number one song on the day of his birth, I'll Be Missing You by Puff Daddy. And that are good too. That was, of course, made for Notorious B.I.G. After he passed it, passed away. Mm -hmm. Or was that for two pack? I can't remember which one it was. Lined up the middle, set, flipped the second for one, on to first. In time for the double play, a 4-6-3 double play. It races the Cardinals rally here in the third inning. We're still scoreless at the top of the fourth inning. You're watching Hamilton Cardinals baseball on Cable 14. Yeah, just a poorly placed ground ball there from Nicholson to make a, for an easy double play for this Bay Cats defense, even with the speed on the base pass. Of course, it landed right at second base. All he did was take, take his time, flip the second for one, and had it forever and a day to get even the speedster Nicholson. As we're back in the bird's nest, I'm Neil Shrewas, West Jared Matthews. Thank you so much for joining us on Cable 14 on your Sunday afternoon. Another beautiful afternoon in the ballpark. Of course, there was rain in the forecast earlier, and thankfully it, it dissipated, and now we've got a bright, sunny day here to bring you a ball game. Yeah, another hot one. We've seen a few few games up in the 30s this season, and uh, good to see you. Good weather. Better exactly. than a rain out. We'll take it all day. Exactly. Better than a rain out. Emily Thompson down on the field doing some more 90s trivia. Yep. But yeah, we're in for another good game here today. Still scoreless heading to the top of the fourth. Well, we got a quick pause in the action as well here. We'll go through the standings. Will and Jackfish leading the IBL with a 19 and 6 record. The Barry Baycats now 16 and 7 on the season. Two games behind in the standings. Kitchener's in the third place at four and a half. At 15 and 10, of course, their victory over the Gulf Royals. In a range short of the fair yesterday, three to one over the Royals. Cardinals who got Friday night rained out in London. They're 13 and 11 of the season in fourth place. Five and a half games ahead off the pace. Toronto Maple Leafs are right behind their heels at 13 and 12. It's six games back. London Majors are 8 and 13. Gulf Royals 8 and 16 now. Of course, the Brantford Red Sox who picked up a pair of wins this week are 4 and 21. Yeah, you love to see that. And really, it was just a matter of time until they broke through and got a couple wins with well, the of amount course, of. Of course, and then Friday night runs. they took the Royals right to the ninth inning. In a, had a 4-3 lead, unfortunately losing that ball game. Yeah, the amount of good hitters there on that team, it was just, it really was just a matter of time. Ryan Rios will leave the things off here. For the Baycats in the top of the fourth inning, we're still scoreless. Rios flew, popped up to the Luis Bernardo, who's last time up. Yeah, speaking of great hitters, Ryan Rio absolutely on fire over the last month or so. Everybody in the league's blaming me for saying he wasn't, he was just missing baseballs last time, so. I'm going to keep my mouth shut when Rio's bats. <laughs> Rio third in the IBL in batting average. Also got a 13-game active or 13 game active hit streak. I hit the mile-high chopper fielded by Josh Niles at third, and there's one away. So Five Ryan three. unable to extend it there, but he'll have a few more opportunities. Adam Odd will be the batter. He walked his last time up. Odd, of course, got stranded at second base up yep. in the <laughs> second inning. Neither team having a runner past second base so far in this ball game as the pitching staffs have definitely done their jobs to this, this point. Colby yeah. Ring will tow the rubber here with one away as Odd steps in. Yeah, both teams uh, making some pretty nice plays on defense. Double play, a couple <laughs> lunging catches. It has been. Almond to Mr. Odd. Misses outside. Of course, Tyler Duncan's incredible diving catch out there to end the third. Odd takes this one to center field. Keys on the beat on it. He'll camp underneath it. One handed grab, and there's two away. Yeah, nothing against Shula fan, but anything hit to that right side of the outfield 
just immense amount of confidence if you're oh, a pitcher exactly. right now. Exactly. If you're a pitcher, it's like, yeah, one of those two guys is going to grab that down there. And Jordan Shulofan is also not a bad defensive player himself out there. With finishing up his career with the University of Maine. Yeah, definitely, definitely no slouch. He nope. can play a lot of spots on the diamond and exactly. uh, getting a chance here in left. Of course, any of the highlight clips I've seen on this TikTok, he likes to jump on that first pitch and make pitchers pay here. So mm -hmm. interesting to see what he can do the next time up. As Ring gets ahead to the count to Hayden Jack at 1-1. At one, one, one. Evens the count one on one now. Two way here in the top of the fourth and what's been a scoreless affair so far. That one misses on the outside part of the plate for three and one. Or is it two and one, sorry. Yeah, and I'll get to it later if it uh, remains a close game, but both of these teams, very impressive records in one score games. It's gonna be interesting to see Bit of a pitcher's duel so far. Ring pounds that one in there for the strike. To even the count at two and two. Ring just doesn't seem like he's comfortable out there right now, but he's definitely battling the best he can here. Looking for a ground ball or a strikeout here. Get himself back in the dugout. Two-two pitch. His line right at Niles at third base. He makes the one-handed grab. The end of the inning. We're scoreless after three and a half here at Bernie Arbor Stadium. You're watching Hamilton Cardinals baseball on Cable 14. Wow, what a catch there from Josh Niles, looking so comfortable over there. You'd think he'd played there all season, but uh, I guess he's just used to those uh, hot shots. No question, no question. That one was absolutely smoked right at him. He didn't have to move his feet, just lunged down and picked it off the dirt. Yep. Evan Souls coming back out on the mound for the Baycats. Quick shout out to the uh, Barry Baycats media team. Usually we see them here at the ballpark, not uh, not, not today. around today though. I'm sure they're watching. Well, I'm guaranteeing they are. I'm guaranteeing Patrick Melbourne, Sam McCoy, and Ben Davies are walking, watching wherever they are. Probably enjoying their, their Sunday afternoon off after. Absolutely. Or well, not really off. They're definitely watching the game and definitely yeah. tweeting out socially, I'm oh, sure. Oh, for sure, yeah. And it was such a pleasure to go up there and do a ball game. In a pinch last weekend anyways. And I literally walked into the ballpark and Eric Spearance had me off. So, hey, what are you guys doing tomorrow? And I'm like, oh, God, where are we going today? <laughs> where are we going next? So it was fun. Big Cats were very, very hospitable. And that was great, to, a great drive up there. My fiance Jenny had never been up to the Bay Cats Vantage Throne Stadium, so now she can say she's checked that one off the list. I think now combined, we only have to do well and left, and who knows? The season still got a lot of ball games left. We never know. We might wind up in well in even a playoff game. Who knows? Yeah, for sure. Definitely come playoff time, we'll be making the rounds. Clayton Keyes will lead things off here in the Hamilton fourth inning. As both teams have just got. No run so far, just one hit apiece so far, and both teams have had two base runners. Keyes struck out looking his last time out. He'll drop that 316 average down a few points for sure. Keyes didn't like the call on that third call. His average has, in fact, dropped to 313 on the year. First pitch from Souls is in there for strike number one. Dole's doing a good job of getting ahead of these hitters here, like he did in his early half of the season. Yeah, Keyes has had some very pr impressive numbers so far this season, but uh, really doesn't feel like he's actually even hit a stride yet. Hamilton Cardinals fans not liking that strike call from Mike Kinnear. And Keyes quickly behind the counter to 0-2. 2 pitch. His chopped foul as Keyes not going, willing to go down without a fight this time. Yeah, good job to chop that one away to stay alive. He's uh, third in the IBL in runs with 28, so definitely making his fair share of bases or trips around the bases. This one's fouled away. Another good job on that one, but bails himself out to stay alive. The count remains 0 2. Nobody away here in the bottom, home half of the fourth inning. And, uh, on a beautiful Sunday afternoon at the ballpark, the Seagulls are definitely making the rounds looking for scraps and fries and whatever else they can hide. That one's high and in tight. Keys bails out of the way of that one. 
course, you and I keep joking we have to put that sign up like they have at the Springfield Nuclear Plant where X number of days without Clayton Keegan's weight we're wearing the one on the backside. Yeah, that you're one just this right? is outside. It counts even at two and two. His souls wanted that one. Asking for the location from the plate on par. Key's definitely uh, a little nervous about that one. Yep. Of course, with two, you got to protect the plate here. The 2 2 pitch again. This is high. It's now three and two. Another good Your take. Clayton from Keys, you got to be very careful here. You know, he already got rung up by Mike Kinnear once. 100%. Souls engaged around. 3 2 pitch. Swung on and missed, and Key strikes out again for the first out of the inning. Yeah, the high fastball just a little bit too late on that one. I think maybe he was expecting a off speed. Got to bring up Tyler Duncan now, who's on definitely dialed in of late. He singled in the first inning, had a pair of home runs in Kitchener and a single. Up the average to 386 on the season. His average went up a whole six points that last time up with that single. Yeah, with that last single extending his home hit streak to 13 as he gets hit by one here. Clayton Keyes is going, maybe I should have got hit by that. <laughs> yeah. As Duncan was waiting, he can down at first, so that one goes way inside on the hands here and gets Duncan in the lower half of the leg. Cardinals have got a base runner with one away here for Luis Bernardo. Bernardo. Bernardo, 313 on the year, 3 for 30. There are three home runs, 30 RBIs so far. Popped up to the shortstop his last time up. Interesting to see if Duncan tries to get in scoring position to give Bernardo a chance to cash him in. Soul's pitch. This is outside for ball one. I don't think that was a pitch on. I think Duncan definitely got a good read there, but Souls missed the spot. Looks like Souls indicating to the catcher to move in just slightly here. Let me set up a little more inside. 1-0 pitch. Misses low for ball two. Souls not even looking over Duncan at first. He's like, like just going back in the zone and going after Bernardo. Seems to be his mission here. Duncan with three stolen bases on the season. Only been caught stealing once. So not a huge threat, but... Uh, Two old misses outside. It's now 3-0. Wouldn't be shocked if he did try it. I wonder if he's trying to pitch around Bernardo as much as possible, not to get anything inside to him so he can pull it down the line or over a fence somewhere here with Josh Niles coming up. Of course, Niles batting 250 on the year. Three home runs, eight RBIs. Might like a better matchup. That one's in there for a strike. Bernardo taking all the way. It's three and one. Souls at just 45 pitches at this point here in the fourth inning. Here's the three one. Duncan goes. This one's hit foul back our way. Mm. Had a reaction nice. time, but the hand up, thinking it was coming right at me, but it wasn't. We got that net up there, and Duncan will have to go back to first now with the three two count. It was going to be close there, but I think that might have been ball four up and in. Well, with the runner going, he had to protect up the plate as well, too. So, mm -hmm. Of course, Sam Cocker drives most of the accolades in this league. Of course, Justin Mara as well. But Luis Bernardo's had a really good season so far. Definitely. You can't discount the drive. Duncan goes again. 3-2 pitch is chopped at the second base. But the only play they're going to have is get to Bernardo at first. 4-3 will go to your put out if Duncan will reach second base safely. And now yeah. in scoring position for Josh Niles. Yeah, and mission accomplished more or less there for the Cardinals. Just trying to get Duncan over to second. Hope for a base hit and get a run on the board. Yep. So Bernardo got the bounce that would have kind of rolled the other way just slightly. He probably would have been aboard there. And Duncan was probably going third, maybe thinking home. As Josh Niles will be up to now. His responsibility to cash in Duncan now with two away. Niles 0 for 1. He hit a fly ball to center field his last time up. Takes strike one on the outside part of the plate. And Souls ahead of the count at 0 1. Yeah. Niles having a decent season, as you mentioned, batting 250 with eight RBIs. But you know he'd like to bump that up a little bit. Certainly not up to his standards. Niles fouls that one away. Counts quickly 0 1 2 here. This is where Souls usually gets the outside pitch here and tries to dangle it on the outside part of the plate. Try to lure Mike Kinnear to give him that outside part again. Plumpton will probably set up again outside. As that's definitely what they've been trying to do is just keep it off the hands of the, the Cardinals batters here today, away from their wheelhouse. Souls 
Souls from the stretch. 0-2 pitch on its way. Strike three called on the outside plate. Plump, Plumpton did a great job of painting that corner. And Souls delivered. Cardinals leave Duncan at second base. We're still scoreless. We're at the top of the fifth inning here at Bernie Iver Stadium. You're watching Hamilton Cardinals baseball on Cable 14. Home plate umpire uh, hearing it a little bit there from manager Dean Castelli of the Cardinals. But uh, certainly uh, nothing going there. Not going to be able to overturn that one. No, exactly. I think it's more of anything. If he's hearing from Castelli, it's probably, hey, where was that? Why, are, why isn't our guy getting in as well? Yep. And I'm, if I'm Mike Kavnir, I'm probably saying, because your guy keeps missing high. Whereas Plumpton was set up there, Souls hit the glove right in the midsection there and got the call. We have a team huddle going on over in the Barry, bowl, or, uh, Barry dugout. A little rally cry, maybe. Trying to get something going on the base pass. Yep. So far, nothing going for either team. Well, maybe the guys are just pa passing knowledge on what they throw you, whatever else, what are you, what are you seeing from them? What, maybe just reminding each other to, hey, be patient here. Ring's missing up. Maybe work for those extra pitches, take that extra strike here. Mm -hmm. At the top of the fifth inning, it's upon us here, Colby Ring. Pretty solid through four innings. Yeah, he's missed a few times. He's got a couple walks across. But he hasn't been solid. He's definitely, definitely pounding the strike zone as often as he used to do here, or he has been in throughout the season. Just a one strikeout so far in the contest. Kyle Mavis will be the batter to start the start this fifth inning here. Mavis walked in the second inning, but that's as far as he got was first base. As Tyler Plumpton grounded out the end of the inning as with on a 5-3. Yeah, just one hit apiece for each team so far in this game. Colby Ring coming into this game had an opponent batting average of 278. Mavis swings and misses that first offering from Ring. 278 might sound a little bit high, but in the IBL, that's that's pretty solid that's considering pretty solid, the especially. level of talent he has to face day in and day out. Exactly. A lot of guys with that north of 300 mark this season. Definitely. The, def the, 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 the batters have definitely gotten better this year. That's far across the IBL, too. The, you can see even the ERAs are higher. Mm -hmm. Last year, you had two guys with ERAs under one. This year, you've been lucky if you find somebody under two mm -hmm. by the end of this year. That one swung into the glove, and Bernardo holds on to that one. For strike two. Mavis, what we said, was batting 200 coming into play this afternoon. No home runs, just four RBIs. He walked his first time up. Rings got him on the ropes, 0-2 pitch. His line to left field, third base side. Niles makes the catch. In foul territory for out number one. Yeah, good overhand curveball there from Colby Ring, able to get him to just pop it up nicely to the third baseman. Josh Mavis Niles. Was expecting fastball, and that one broke on him, and he got just too far underneath it. And Tyler Plumpton with the batter. He's 0 for 1. He grounded out 5 3 to end the, the second inning. Of course, the middle of the IBL is definitely a log jam. Of baseball teams. Yeah, you went through the standings there, and you're right, two teams kind of running it away with it a little bit. Hamilton was in the mix before this three game losing streak, so oh, if they, they can. Have, this is the unfortunate, really tough part of the season where they yep. have the Well and Jackfish, they have the Barry Bay Cats, they have the Kitchener Panthers, and the Toronto Maple Leafs all in that little span. And that one's in there for a strike, and rings ahead to count 0 2 here on Plumpton. Yeah, they've done a fairly good job of handling business against the bottom half of the league, like London and Brantford, but. They haven't uh, had a ton of success against the top teams. Oh, exactly. Chop to the shortstop. Nicholson up with it. He'll step and throw, and Plump is retired 6-3 for out number two here in the second in the fifth inning. Nicholson just bobbled that briefly there as it went into his glove, but able to settle it down and make the play no problem. Owen Jansen, who singled his last time up in the third inning, will be the batter. Jansen not having the kind of season he's used to seeing in this league. At least not at the plate, but defensively he's been doing pretty well. 
Colby Ring about to hit 60 pitches on the afternoon. Here in the top of the fifth, that's pretty good. First pitch to Jansen's in there for a strike call by Mike Kinnear. And Ring doing what he used to, he's done so many times before. Get ahead of these hitters. Definitely feeling more confident this inning on the hill. 0-1 pitch on its way. This is for a ball to even the count at 1-1. in there for a strike and it's one and two. Another beautiful curve ball there from Ring able to fool Jansen. Jansen kind of hesitated, thought about swinging it and then watched with a break and it was like yeah by that time it was too late so yeah, yeah he just took the strike. It's one and two. Ring gets a sign for Bernardo, comes to the pitch. One two. This is high for a ball, it's two and two. Ring trying to get Jansen to chase that fastball on the outside. Good discipline. Hit off the hands here. But caught by the left fielder to end the inning. Schoen fell underneath that one. Baycats go three up, three down here in the top of the fifth inning. We're still scoreless as you're watching Hamilton Cardinals baseball on Cables 14. Little out of town scoreboard update across the IBL. Two other games happening today. The Welland Jackfish visiting the Toronto Maple Leafs at Christie Pitts. It is the top of the third. The Jackfish currently lead one to nothing. And later at 5.15, the Brantford Red Sox will visit the Kitchener Panthers at Jack Couch Park. Of course, the Red Sox have already beat the Kitchener Panthers at Jack Couch Park this year. So from the Kitchener Panthers, yeah, I might be riding high off that win in Guelph last night. But back in my head, I'm going, I can't, we can't take this team lightly anymore. Definitely not. And I think a lot of IB, well, LBL teams are learning the same thing. The Bay Cats last week they walked in thinking they were going to have cakewalks. And, well, they got their butts handed to them and their hats handed to them on the way out. Baycats, of course, got in that slugfest 20 to 15. Brantford Red Sox winning that ball game. And the next night, the, Bay, uh, the, the Red Sox beating the Maple Leafs 4 to 3. Two nights in a row. Of course, rainouts, like we mentioned this week. I'm going to got a game tomorrow night. The Baycats are in Kitchener tomorrow night at Jack Couch Park. Game time is 7 30 p.m. Then the Welland Jackfish taking on the London Majors on Wednesday night. I think there's a Tuesday night game in Guelph as well. So a bunch of rainouts just getting made up this week too. So keep it, check your, your local IBL teams and check your schedules, guys and gals. You might have some ball games you weren't expecting this week on your schedules. Yep. Evan Soul's back out here to work the bottom of the fifth inning. We're still scoreless. Quite the pitcher's duel has so far. Guys, your Souls and Ring have definitely been dialed in here again. So for the Bay Cats, it's just like it feels like it's a repeat of yesterday. All right, some more trivia, 90s trivia for you. What's the top TV show today in 1990? Okay, so it wasn't Friends. Seinfeld was, I want to say it's Cheers. Bingo, you got it. I was about to say it had to be Cheers. If it wasn't, if it wasn't Seinfeld, it wasn't Friends. It was definitely, it was must see, must see TV on NBC, that's for sure. So it was, they got, because back then it was Cheers followed by Seinfeld. And then for, when Cheers ended, they brought in Friends. And yeah. the rest is history as far as that stuff goes. Yeah, Seinfeld, the top show in 1994, 95, 98, 99. So, yeah. another 90s classic. I was working One in the pro shops well. uh, at the University of Guelph back in those days. So, once the, once the boss went home, then we turned the sports off about 8 o'clock in the night and throw Seinfeld and friends on while we're sharp putting skates to finish up the night in the hockey rink. Usually it was golf or something at those time of nights or CFL football, which I'm not a big football guy, so I didn't understand it. So, mm -hmm. as the Banning takes a ball one, a one one count here from Souls. The Banning batting 311 on the season, 0 for 1 today though. Three Five. home runs and 12 RBIs. Two one count from Souls to the Banning now. He's definitely working outside here. He doesn't want these guys to get anything on the wheelhouse that can turn on her. I drive up the middle as the Banning fouls that one away to even the count at two and two. So just one hit given up by each starting pitcher. Souls a little bit more efficient though, up around 55 pitches right now, whereas um, Colby Ring was closer to 65 by the end of that half inning. So that offering from Souls just misses the outside part of the plate. It's three and two. To even the Manning was kind of questioning that one. Fully expecting Mike Kinnear to ring him up on that one. 3-2 pitch. 
is hit down the line. First baseman charges in foul territory. Doesn't see it. Has to backpedal and won't make the catch. Jansen lost it in the sun here. Yeah, you can see him pointing to the sky there at the sun. I think the wind also playing a little bit of a factor. Yeah, it's kind of pretty gusty towards right field. Well, McLovin's actually down, down on the line here, so I guess they must have put it away just as a precaution because it kept blowing away. I was looking down and going, what was missing down there? He was up before, but now he's gone. Yeah, I don't think he's made a catch yet this season, no, which is pretty is. surprising given the because, size. Well, it's the size and the grand driven. It's like where it is, too, positioning-wise. Yeah. But Devaney will take the leadoff walk here, and Souls finds himself with the leadoff man aboard here to start the fifth inning. Now at the point, the left fielder, number 40, Jordan Shulafan. Jordan Shulafan will be the batter now. He struck out his first time up. Has a job to do here. He's got to get the banning into the scoring position under 90 feet. Souls pitching like he pitched the first half of the season early on. Yeah, I wonder if we'll see either of these teams resort to any bunt attempts over the next couple of innings. At the, at the, if the get score stays the way it is, Van, hey, small ball's not a bad, bad idea here. Throw over to Banning, dives it back in safely. Shul fan, they were trying to see if Shul fan was going to square around and tip his hand a little bit, but doesn't look like he's going to square around at all here. Another throw over. Of course, in the major leagues, that would be the second disengagement rule, so the banning would be way scot-free here. But we don't have that rule in play here, at least not yet. Or that we know of. That we know of. <laughs> Pretty sure it wasn't on the league rules meetings when I was still in that different role. But yeah, I was almost positive. I remember talking about that rule specifically on the three the three batter rule yeah. in a Zoom call during the COVID times when Major League Baseball brought it in. And I was almost positive it passed, but her morale looked it up and it said, yeah, it didn't pass. The motion fa failed. Herb does a great job of keeping the league going. He's also the league secretary. He's also the league statistician. So. Yeah, it's definitely something that could fly under the radar when it really doesn't happen that often. Oh, Most exactly. teams wouldn't bring somebody in and for one And you can't guy. fault the umpires either because they work so many different leagues. Yeah. Each league has a different rules. Of course, the PBLO, the whatever it is, the Canadian, what, the, the, other, the other under 16, under 18 teams as well there too. They all have different rule sets. As it's a 2-1 count from Souls to Jordan Schulfand. Swung on and missed. Evens the count at two and two. So you did see Shula fan fake, fake or uh, show bunt there for one pitch. Wonder if that was actually any part of the plan, or is he just trying to bring those? He's probably trying to mess with the Bay Cats in. infield a bit and hope he can get somebody to at least buy in a little bit, give the batting a couple extra steps here, and pull the third baseman in. Yeah. As he smashes one down the line. Throw back over again, and the chorus of boos come from the from the Redbird fans here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Banning definitely has some wheels over there at first, so he could be going with two strikes. 2-2 two -two pitch. Called strike three again, and, and he just got ejected too. Mike Kinnear had enough from the Cardinals, and Jordan Shulafan will pay the price ultimately here. It's a strikeout and the ejection. We'll have a new left fielder in the top of the sixth inning. And Shula Tanner Ruffin has been a not a fan of Mike Kinnear. No. I'm going to mark that in my scorebook now so I don't forget. Put a big old green mark there. So you'll probably see somebody like uh, Danny Berg or somebody come in to I left think field Berg for him. Probably the first guy on the off the bench here. Or, or maybe you'll see some people switch around. Position-wise, we'll see. Yeah, the DH maybe. I, think I don't think you Debanning. I don't think you wanted there. the DH. So you don't want to pull the DH out of the game because then the pitcher's got to bat for himself. Right, right. right. But yeah, Dennis Debanning would be the next logical step. Mm -hmm. soul gets ahead of the count here. Oh, one pitch. This is high for one and one. I don't blame. Uh, don't blame Shula Fan for getting a little bit frustrated. It seems like. Hasn't been the most consistent strike zone. It no, seems it like seems like it's been more like one side, and that's not us trying to be biased or anything. But definitely yeah. seems like the calls have gone Barry's way more than they have been Hamilton way on those outside pitches. 
as the Banning dives back in once again. But I do think overall this season we've seen some pretty good umpiring around the league. There hasn't been too many issues, but. No, exactly. To Banning heading the second now. That was just foul. Rempel got all the one he wanted down there and just hooked it a little too far. Yeah, Rempel just a half second early on that pitch. He smoked it, just missing the third base side. Did you play MLB the show at all? A little bit here and there, yeah. 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 That's one of the ones you just see that just too early, too late, or whatever thing swings on those ones. This would drive you up the wall. Then you hit these perfect, perfect things right at the center fielders or right at the shortstop for a line drive. Like, come on, I hit it perfectly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's baseball for you. That is. One two pitch to Rempel. Outside, a little too far. Plumped and tried to pull it back in. These Mike Cardinals, Kinnear. Cardinals hitter is going to have to do some real mental gymnastics here on these outside pitches. Yeah. I think you're going to have to go in that mindset. Okay, if it's even out there, guys, you got to get a piece of it. Yeah, to swing or not to swing. 2 2 pitch from Souls. High for ball three as Rempel did his best to hold that one back. Yeah, you can see him laughing there. He almost went for it. Yep. Souls with five strikeouts to this point in this ballgame. Looking for number six on this 3 2 pitch. Chopped by Rempel down the line. That one's going to go foul again. And we'll do it again at 3 and 2. Still scoreless here in the top of the fifth inning. Or bottom of the fifth inning, sorry. Both teams dying for a clutch hit here. They've gotten a couple runners on each, but haven't been able to yeah, even but get no, past nobody's second. Nobody's seen third base at all so far. Three, two pitch. High for ball four. Runners at first and second now with one away. For Charlie Towers. Good patience there from Tanner Rempel to uh, watch ball four after fouling off a couple good pitches from Evan Souls. Towers, the second baseman, looking to advance the runners here with one away. Towers getting caught swinging at one on the inside there, low. As he resets here. Souls takes a look over at second base. To Banning with a decent lead. Towers puts the bat on the ball. It's grounded to first base. And he'll have to take the out at first. That's Jaco making the play, sorry, Jansen making the play at first. Unfortunately, it looked like they weren't sure where they wanted to go with that baseball when Towers hit it, and then they had to start calling. You heard Plumpton yelling, one, 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 at least to get the out. Brandon and Brandon Nicholson will be the batter now with two away and two runners in scoring position as we finally see his third base today. Yeah, fairly good job there by Charlie Towers, just hitting it to the right side, able to, able to advance the runners. Well, the scorebook is three unassisted on the play. Nicholson takes strike one on the outside part of the plate. Nicholson still looking for his first hit of the day. Had one up the middle his last time up, went into a double play. You have the feeling he's due for a big day one of these days really soon. He takes strike two on the outside part of the plate. Did not like that call. It did look a little bit high from here, but of course we don't have the angle that Mr. No, Kinnear does. We don't, we don't have the, the umpire cam on the helmet either, so we can't exactly Go back to the Google stat cast and pull that one up. 0-2 oh, pitch to Nicholson. Foul the way. Nicholson does his job to stay alive here at 0-2. Two. two away, two runners in scoring position for the Cardinals as they threaten here in the fifth inning. Well, meeting Tyler on the Plumpton, mound. Plumpton goes out to have a talk with Evan Souls on this next pitch. Probably just remind him, hey, don't get it anywhere inside here. Nicholson can smash you pretty hard. Up the middle. You have the feeling that this, at, at the first, the two runs might be enough to win this ball game. Yeah, the way it's going certainly could be the case. Nicholson steps back in here, still 0-2. Oh, when sails high for a ball, it's 1-2 now. 
Yeah, but you were the Cardinals batter. You got to sit there. Okay, if it's on the outside part of the plate, I got to get a hack on it. I got to get a piece on it. I just got to stay alive somehow. I got to take it and put it the other way. Because we're not getting any favors from the plate on fire here. Definitely not. One two pitch. Swung on and missed. Nicholson couldn't get that one. Solis gets him to chase the outside pitch. The Cardinals will strand a pair of runners here. We're scoreless after five complete here at Bernie Arbor Stadium. You're watching Hamilton Cardinals TV on cable 14. Yeah, Soul's doing a good job there to get out of a jam. Uh, Cardinals, I guess the small positive there, they were able to get his pitch count up a little bit. Now up past 75 on the day. So that's the Baycats will definitely positive. have to go into the bullpen sooner than later here. If you're the Cardinals, that's got to be your, your only solstice in that inning. It's definitely frustrating to get runners in the scoring position and just can't bring anybody home because you're feeling like you have to so battle now, the umpires and the other team at the same time. Another Cardinals classic here down on the field with Emily. Looks like yellow is going to take this one in a landslide. And the McPhail tire rice once again, the, one of the fan favorite events of the ball game here. I don't think that's fair. I think that yellow tire is quite a bit uh, lighter than the red one. I think it is. We're going to have to go weigh these ones ourselves here. To, maybe yeah. we'll have to go in and try to try them ourselves one of these times before a game. Yeah. yeah that was a bit uh, unfair there. Give the smaller kid the bigger tire. Yeah, exactly. It's just like it seemed like an unfair advantage. Maybe it wasn't a, cal maybe it wasn't a lot of mistakes were made there. As Colby Ring will go back to work here to start the sixth inning in a, in a scoreless tie here at Hamilton. Yeah, just one hit, a piece. one hit a piece for each team. I think we're just due for one of these innings where somebody finally breaks through and it might be the difference in the ballgame. CHGH TV is Hamilton Halton, Niagara's news leader. Stay informed with local news, weather, and traffic seven days a week. Hamilton Halton, Niagara's news leader. Stay informed with local news, weather, and traffic seven days a week. Now streaming on YouTube or CHGH.com. That's some more 90s trivia for you here, Neil. Today in 1995, what was the number one movie? Number one movie, 1995. Um... It wasn't Independence Day, was it? No, Apollo 13. Houston, we have a problem. Great movie by Ron Howard, Tom Hanks, Kevin Bacon, Gary Sinise in that role as well. I remember that movie very, very well. Of course, I remember the soundtrack as well. I they had the soundtrack on CD somewhere, but it was definitely it was a great movie, of course. I wasn't around for the, the Apollo landing missions, but I did see it at the film strips in high school. My dad had the old Super 8 reels from when he came from India. Actually, so have the news broadcast. Neil Armstrong landing on the moon back in the 60s. And speaking of space, Cardinals looking for a moon shot here of their own. Still a 0-0 ball game in the sixth inning. The top of the order will face Colby Ring for the third time. Noel McGarry Doyle uh, fouls that one off to make the count one and two. Haven't seen a lot of score, low scoring games in the IBL this season. Well, they do happen once in a while, and then mm -hmm. when they are, they're just absolute web gems and yep. immediate instant classics in this league. I guess we're due for one of them. Yeah. Obi Ring still out there, the lefty. Well, the Gary one. Doyle takes an excuse me swing. He has to hit that one almost off his hands here. Yeah, I think but he was fortunate not to hit it off his hands. He wasn't expecting that ball to come in on him. We'll do it again with one and two as McGarry Doyle will adjust himself here, just make sure his fingers and digits are all in the right places and readjust his batting gloves. No, no, no more Garcia Parra style. Dang it, Reed Duffy's got me referencing the Boston Red Sox now myself. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Thank you, Duffy. Thank you. <laughs> McGarry Doyle 0 for 2 on the day. I'll never live that down now. Jeez. The chopper hit to the second baseman. He's up with it. He'll throw to first. Towers with the throw. Gets the speedster McGarry Doyle in time. 4-3 goes your put out. There's one away. Charlie Towers making a very nice play. Ranging to his right. Digging that heel in and making a good throw over to first. I think he looks very comfortable over there. As he does. To yeah, exactly. I think, it, I think it's just as he gets used to playing over there, he's going to feel a lot more comfortable. But now he's going to have to remind himself everything is backwards. Don't throw it to third. <laughs> yeah, here a uh, rendition there from super fan of uh, Oski Wee Wee, typically a Ticats yeah, champ. Yeah, he's, yeah, well, he's just trying to get the Hamilton faithful get going on something here. Give those yeah. guys a little boost. Changing the words a little Ejo bit. He squares around the bunt, but that one goes high. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the Cardinals are going to have to come up with a chance of their own or something. Maybe yeah, that's maybe. It's a good job for Superfan. 
Maybe Rock and Robin or something. Who knows? That one misses low, and the count is now two, ball, two balls and no strikes. Dijo. Dijo 0 for 2 in the contest. He struck out and flown out to the center uh, right field. As Tyler Duncan had to do a circus like catch out there. That one's in there for a strike. Good pitch there from Ring to take it to 2 and 1. Ring at 72 pitches to this point, so he should be okay to for at least another inning here, hopefully. No activity in either bullpen at this point. Although you see Stefan Strecker stretching out the, the hamstrings down the line here. This one's sky high back behind her. And Bernardo makes the catch, and Ejo is retired for out number two. Great play. Another one from the catcher, Luis Bernardo. He's been all over that area making a few catches today. That was like a mile high because it went above here. I couldn't even see it anymore. <laughs> I had to wait until it came down. Starlin Rodriguez going, you caught that, man? Bernardo will give him a little pipe on the shoulder as he goes fast. Definitely the camarader camaraderie in this league is always a good thing to see, too. A lot of guys respecting each other at the ballpark. Rodriguez 0 for 2. He's grounded out to shortstop and flown out to right field so far. Takes strike one from Ring. Both Ring. pitchers have really just settled into their own here so far in this ball game. Definitely Ring feeling pretty comfortable with that curve ball and Souls with a breaking ball of his own that he's been utilizing today. Both guys just bouncing back off some rough outings themselves. Souls was the guy that got roughed up in Brantford, I do believe. That one misses high. And the count is 1 1. Of course, we mentioned Colby Ring got roughed up in Toronto last Sunday. Definitely out here to atone for his shortest start of the season. So it was uh, Shula Fan that was thrown out of the game as this one's hit on the ground of the third baseman, Niles. Throw over to first in time to Rempel, and that'll end the inning. We have a new left fielder, that's for sure. Yeah, Connor Bowie taking over for him, and Caster, Ontario native. We're still scoreless as we head to the home half of the sixth inning. You're watching Hamilton Cardinals baseball on Cable 14. So a little bit of action in the Cardinals bullpen. Stefan Strecker getting loose. Yeah, Strecker's just surprised. losing up his, his hamstrings, his quads, his old man parts, like I say some days. Takes us a little while to get used, get loose as we're welcoming you back up to the press box here in the Bird's Nest. I'm Neil Shrewaswa, it's Jarrett Matthews. Thank you so much for joining us on Cable 14 this afternoon. And a huge welcome to the Bay Area Bay Cats fans who may be watching it as well. Yeah, Thank you so uh, much for joining us. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast so far. It's been our pleasure to bring it to you once again on a great Sunday afternoon to be here at the ballpark. Yeah, it's you guys only have never fitting. been to Bernie only. Arbor Stadium, we definitely recommend you come join us in the near future. Yeah, it's only fitting that's here on 90s today. Uh, we're in the 90 degree weather, and uh, <laughs> it's another scorcher today. No different than the last couple Sundays. Well, exactly. but, uh, Stay hydrated. We got the Gatorade going. We got the water going too. Yeah, you can probably hear the 90s music blaring over the speakers. Exactly. Everyone enjoying Back themselves. Will Smith just used to make rap music albums, the occasional movie. Yeah. Now it's the other way around. Yeah. There's Big Willie style in the background today. Yeah, and this game moving uh, fairly quickly, as a lot of games that did back in the 90s. I was talking about that Jays game earlier, and it was uh, I think it was like two hours and 35 minutes or something yeah. like that. So Of course, it was also the anniversary this week of Joe Carter wearing that infamous misspelled Toronto jersey mm. up there. Of course, it was a manufacturing error. I don't know how it got in the, into, the, bolt, into the, the equipment bag even, though, because you yeah. think somebody would have realized, hey, it's hanging on the wall here. Why is it spelt wrong? But Joe just put it on like it was a normal day and went out there with a, with a misspelled Toronto jersey. Yeah, you do something uh, so many days in a row, you're bound to forget to, yeah. to even look at something like that. Like, who would expect that? Oh, exactly. Maybe he broke into something and that was a backup jersey or something, but it was just weird that he went out there with that misspelled Toronto jersey. As Clayton Keyes will lead off the sixth inning here against Devin Sewell and the Barry Baycats, we're still scoreless. Just we mentioned, one hit apiece on either side. Both pitchers are having a chess match out there. See yeah, who blinks sure. first, maybe. Bit of a defensive battle, a lot of plays being made around the diamond, and Key is looking to put one in play as he's 0 for 2 with two strikeouts today. Hasn't it's been too happy with himself or the umpire. Of course, the matter. umpire just gives him another strike here, and Keyes must be in his own little world now. That one misses low. It's 1-1 one one here, and Keyes is probably going to have lost all concept of the strike zone right about now. It's just, hey, if you throw it anywhere near my wheelhouse, I'm going to have to take a hack at it. Yeah, I'm definitely having a tough time keeping track of what's getting called and what's not. That one misses out there for ball number two. It's two and one now. 
He's followed by Tyler Duncan and Luis Bernardo in this inning. Cardinals looking to get something going here. That one's fouled away by Keyes, even to count at two and two. How's your uh, air conditioner holding up over there? Uh, it's doing a little breezy thing, but I guess if it was more of an enclosed area, it would probably do more. Like if I would take that to Jack Couch, it would probably make a godsend. <laughs> Last week at the Jack Couch, it was a sauna. Uh, there we go. And Hit the old there horn there. Mr. Clayton Keyes has worn another one on the backside here at Bernie Arbor Stadium. Yeah, and that's... Let's take uh, that off the wall once again, and there we go. Yeah, we're into double digits now. Clayton Keyes, <laughs> ten times he's been hit by a pitch it's this season. It's almost like it has to happen for the good things to happen for the Cardinals here. There's only one other guy in the league who's been hit by uh, as many pitches as he has, and it's uh, Jeremy Bayou, another former Cardinal. Yeah, Bayou but, wears uh, him a lot, too, and, of course, I had... Uh, Matt Fabian on the inside the uh, uh, IBL sh show, or out around the IBL show, the IBL and script as we're calling it, earlier this week. So we're going to see if we can get Tyler Duncan on this week for a little chat as well. I'm sure that'll be interesting. He'll have lots to say. <laughs> Clayton Keyes heading to second here as Tyler Duncan pops it up in the infield, so he's going to have to make a run back to first. As Duncan the ball swings on that first offering, and Keyes gets back safely. <laughs> He's got a very good jump there at first. It looked like he was going to be in safely, but Duncan. I think the hit run was on there, and he was. I think Keys or Duncan realized he had to try to protect the plate there too to give Keys a chance to get back. But unfortunately, he got a little too far underneath that one and popped it up a mile high and an easy catch for the third baseman. Duncan, of course, with the lone hit for the day for the Cardinals, a single to the right side. Bernardo's got the old school pants on today. Definitely don't match the top colors. No, they're. They remind me of the old St. Louis Cardinal jersey the pants, as far as the St. Louis Brown pants, even. So it's definitely a different color. Over to first, trying to keep Clayton Keyes honest there after seeing he took off last time. Bernardo fouls this one away. This one's going to go back behind our heads here to our right for a strike. And Mike Morasco with the, the dynamite drop ins with the sound effects once again. So Bernardo down to 306, average on the season. Be another guy I'd love to have on, just have a chat with. Yeah, he does seem like a pretty positive and upbeat player. He's always got a smile on his face. That was those hits to the shortstop. Rodriguez over the second for one, on to first, he'll get Bernardo, and that's another double play. Baycats are race the Cardinals here in the sixth inning as Evan Souls claps his defense behind him. We're still scoreless after six innings here at Bernie Arbor Stadium. You're watching Hamilton Cardinals baseball on Cable 14. Yeah, and uh, just what the doctor ordered there for the Bay Cats, and pretty much how this entire game has gone. You know, you get a couple guys on, and uh, one poorly placed hits, and the innings over. I think, like you alluded to earlier, we might see a small ball situation here in the later stages. Here, somebody's just going to have to. You get a base runner on. You're going to have to do everything you can to force the defense to make the play behind you. Yeah, I mentioned it earlier as well. Uh, these teams both very good in one-run games. Barry 5-0 and oh, and Hamilton 4-1. and one. So one of those uh, has to give today. Yeah, and I think, I think the, 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 the one against the, is against the Big Cats, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. we got hot dogs and pizza going here. Okay, pizza didn't touch first base, so. Yeah, that's got to be a, a little time differential or a time penalty at some point here. Hot dog also not touching second. He realizes this how it's going to be. Yep. Hot Dog takes the inside and takes the lead as they head to home here. Hot Dog increases the lead here by three quarters of the length. And we got and a wiener. We, we got, got a wiener. wiener. We got a wiener. There we go. Nicely done. Well, dynamite yeah. drop in there, Jarrett. Pizza Kid might be a little crusty after that <laughs> one. <laughs> oh, I like it. I like it. Always a fun time here at Bernie Arbor Stadium between innings, so make sure you guys come on down. Bring the whole family. Lots to do here in the ballpark, lots of games for the kids as well. So definitely check out the Hamilton Cardinal website, buy your tickets online. Come yeah. join us for some fun on either a Sunday afternoon or a Friday night here at Bernie Arbor Stadium. Yeah, Pizza Kid has won more often times than not this season, just didn't have the sauce today. No, he didn't have the sauce today, no. Hot Dog was cutting, lost a, cutting a lot of mustard out there. Yeah. It was Hopefully good, he was behind, and he was able to catch up and uh, win that one. <laughs> We're going to eventually run out of puns, honestly, folks. Honestly, we will. So Colby Ring coming back out, sticking in this game. It's his game right now. It is. 77 pitches for Ring to this point. As we head to the top of the seventh inning. 
Rings a task here in the seventh inning, of course, we'll start with the always deadly Ryan Rios. Yeah, I was just about to say, if there's anybody who the Baycats could lean on here to get something going, it would be Ryan Rio. Ryan Rios just kind of brings me up when every time, that Jan, back in the 90s when Yarmer Jaeger touched the puck in the, the Olympics against Team Canada, every time Jaeger touched the puck, it was like, oh, no, not this guy, please. Mm -hmm. Of course, the, the Olympics back then with Gretzky on the bench, that's an awful memory of those Olympics. And that shootout they lost to the Russians, or I guess it was the Czech Republic or whatever it was back then. The People's Republic of Czech, Czechoslovakia, or whatever they called themselves back there. Dominic Hasek and Yarmar and 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 Jaeger on the hill, on the wings there, so it didn't make life easy. Uh, steady diet of curveballs here for Rio. That's three in a row. Now a two and one count here. They're just trying not to make, get him any fastballs up in his wheelhouse here. I think if you can paint it low, that's about your best chance. Rio actually beats him up high, high in his own there. Yeah. Even the count at two and two. Rio will be followed by Adam Odd and Hayden Jaco in this inning. As we're still scoreless on the top of the seventh inning. A pitcher's duel for sure. High chopper up the middle. Fielded by Nicholson. He'll throw to first. Ripple will apply the tag on Rios down the line for out number one. Pretty casual throw there from Nicholson, but handled well by Rempel, knowing that there uh, wasn't a lot of speed coming down no, the I first. Think, so. I think Nicholson just realized, didn't realize how he was as well. I think he had the center fielder mentality on that one, too. I've got a gun and a cross. Like, oh, no, I don't. It's Rios running. So, you know, it was a casual tag applied by Rempel down the line into the chest. So with just one hit for the Baycats, as we talked about, but uh, Ryan Rio 0 for 3, and... If you had told Colby ring that at the start of the day, you would take that. I would take I take that in any situation here. You would take holding him to one hit, never mind the exactly. whole Cats roster. Exactly. First pitch from ring misses for a ball to Adam Odd, who's got the one hit. Well, actually, the, he's walked he's walked in this ball game and funneled to center field. Odd skies this one high in the air, up over our heads. Bernardo's not going to get to this one, and the count is one and one. That one probably landed somewhere near the food vendors. Super fan trying to get the crowd into this game. They're having a, had a lot to cheer about, at least at the plate, but good game defensively from both teams. Corbin Peters now warming up in the Cardinals' bullpen. Yeah, pretty much who you'd expect to see this time in the game. Yep. Stefan Strucker, I don't know, shagging fly balls or just acting as defender right now or waiting for his turn to throw some baseballs here. Yeah, I don't think the Cardinals are going to try and test their luck too much with Colby Ring as he inches closer to 80 pitches on the day. Of course, you want to fit it. You want him to go out there with his head high, held high, too. It's like, hey, your, first, your last start wasn't that great, but hey, you bounced right back here. Build on that. Absolutely. Sure, in a perfect world, he'd like to pitch the entire game and have a complete game shutout, but uh, yeah, well, Cardinals exactly. need a win more than anything right they now. They definitely do need the win, especially at this point in the situation, and of course, with the tiebreakers against the Baycats at 2-2 two and two right now. Mm -hmm. Pitch down the line, appeal down to third. He said it did not go around. And it's a 2 2 count to Odd. First time any either catchers actually had to go down to the baselines for a little help on a call. Yeah, Bernardo seemed pretty confident on that one, but not getting the call. Odd did his best to hold his hands back. 2 2 pitch from Ring on its way. Chopped down the line. A great stop by Ripple at first. The throw to Ring is in time for the out. Tanner Rempel with the diving stop that flipped to first. And there's two away. Wow, what a play. Great diving stop there from Rempel. I honestly didn't think he was going to get to that ball. Great job by Rempel. Gets a and another great job from Charlie by Colby Towers Ring, there. able to get there just in time to beat the runner. Adam Three Ott, one no goes your put out. And there's two away. Boy, if you were just watching for the first time today and you saw Tanner Rempel at first and uh, Josh Niles at third, you would think they played there all season. Oh, exactly. They've looked incredibly comfortable. They have. On either corner, making plays left and right. Aiden Jaco now the batter. So he fouls off the first offering down the third base line into the t Cardinals bullpen, which I'm sure one of the guys will flip over to one of these winning kids down the line. Actually, he's going to keep the ball. Where's the fun in that? No, no, he's actually going to going to throw it back into the play here. Where's the fun in that? <laughs> this one's chopped by Jaco in the center field. He's charging hard. He makes a few steps in. Makes the one-handed grab, and he's over. <laughs> three up, three down. Colby Ring goes here in the seventh inning with a great defensive plays behind him here. We're still scoreless as we hit the seventh inning stretch 
here in Hamilton on Cable 14. Yeah, Ring just one pitch shy of 90 on the day, but he will, I guess we'll see if that's going to be his last one or not. It's going to be up to Dean Costelli and the Cardinals management. Evan Souls will come out to pitch the bottom of the seventh inning as we send it down to our friend Emily Thompson for the baseball tradition. Take me out to the ball game. That sounds like Obi just jumped the, the scoreboard here. Yeah, I think you're right. Obi ready! One, two, three, six, you're on the And now we got the chicken dance going on here at Bernie Arbor Stadium. I'm Neil Srivastava as we welcome you back to the bird's nest. Very appropriately here in the seventh inning while the chicken dance is playing. Thank you so much for joining us here on Cable 14. Here's my partner, Jared Matthews. It's been our pleasure to bring you this. Well, it's been a pitcher's duel. That's the best way to put it. 100%. Seven souls and Colby Ring going head to head here in the Bay Area Bay Cats. Find themselves in yet another pitcher's duel, the second one of their weekend. Yesterday was the London Majors and Owen Boone. Today it's Colby Ring. Yeah, we talked about both these teams very good in close games this season. This one, no difference, and uh, going to see how it shakes out as we finally get to see a couple uh, bullpen pitchers starting to warm up, but uh, Sol's still in the game momentarily as he's uh, increasing his pitch count. Uh, Cardinals had a couple rallies here and there, but haven't been able to manage any runs. Well, exactly. I think, I think they're just that one hit away. Once they get the hit, I think the floodgates are going to open for somebody here. Of course, the game in the Under County that's going on right now, the Mullen Jackfish and Toronto Maple Leafs are tied 3-3 in the top of the third inning, or top of the sixth inning. And uh, the Kitchener Panthers hosted the Brantford Red Sox. It's a 5-15 start. You can watch that one on the Panthers' YouTube channel. After you watch this one, it was conclusion. Yeah, and I think it's been a bit of a running theme this season with Cardinals struggling a little bit against starting pitchers, but then once they come out of the game, they've been able to pick it up and uh, kind of jump all over those relievers. Exactly. Hayden J Evan Souls up to 87 pitches today through six. This innings. is the Evan Souls we saw in that first half when he was coming out of the bullpen. He was lights out in the case. He came out here and he shut down this offense in that game where the Cardinals actually rallied the later stages to win that one. This one's grounded to the shortstop. Rodriguez up, but he'll throw to first in time for out number one. As Niles has retired, 6-3 for the foot out. And the first out of the seventh inning here. Step up to the plate, the designated hitter number 16, Dennis Dabani. Dennis Dabani, who's reached base via the walk, will be the batter. He's 0-for-1. He grounded up to the shortstop in the second inning and walked in the fifth. But like everybody else, hasn't seen third base pass anything past third base so far. That one's in there for a strike, and the banning falls behind the count to Souls at 0 1. Do have some activity in both bullpens. Looks like Corbin Peters is definitely getting loose, as is, I think it struck her down on the other side. I can't see who down the, the Bay Cats bullpen is. Their numbers are, fortunately, well, it might be 23 down there. There's guys just kind of swinging the bat down and probably just acting as a batter. As that one swung on and missed by demanding, it's now a one and two count here. Looks like maybe number 28 warming up. But anyway, he's Adam Kahn. Of course, he's faced the, the Cardinals last weekend. Gave, got him, they roughed him up a little bit in the ninth inning, but by that time, the Baycats had already put up a big lead. 2-2 two -two count on to Banning. As he fouls, fouls it off. Here. Yeah, the Cardinals, if they get a base runner here, I would not be surprised to see somebody sacrifice somebody just try to get something going around here. Of course, the Baycats defense to maybe reevaluate their positioning here. Good that take one sails there. outside, even the count at two and two. That was actually ball three on DeBanning. Oh. Full count here, though. Sorry, my apologies. This one's fouled away as DeBanning stays alive at three and two. DeBanning taking no chances on that outside pitch. He's seen too many of his teammates today get running off, rung oh, up by that saw one. Jordan Schulfeld get running out of this ballpark, actually. Yes. Sometimes their emo guys' emotions can take the best of us. Banning hits this one to right field, fairly deep. Right fielder going back. The track. See you later. This Banning with the solo blast. Cardinals lead this one, one nothing. 
the Banning gets a hold of one there down the right field line and kisses it goodbye as he celebrates around first and makes his way quickly around the bases. And he puts the first run on the board for either team. The Cardinals lead one to nothing now. Evan Soles just made a mistake here, and that might be the ball game here. For the Bay, Bay, very big hats and Pamela the Cardinals, you might think that might be enough here, but if you're the Cardinals, you got to put the foot on the gas and put the pedal to the metal here. No lead is safe. So Connor Bowie making his way to the plate, his first at bat of the day after being subbed in for Shula Fan, who was tossed. Yep. Bowie over and left. Batting 313 on the season and just 18, or sorry, 16 at bats, five hits, and actually six RBIs. So pretty impressive in his short amount of time, but he pops this one up to the second baseman for the first out. Now he's out, out number one here with now two away. And Tanner Rempel will step up the plate. Rempel's been hit by a pitch and walked so far. He's got two plate appearances, but no official of that so far. Two away here in the Cardinals' seventh inning. They lead this one one nothing. If you're just tuning in, if you were watching a couple of minutes ago, my apologies for deafening you with that home run call. Yeah, that's just the second hit of the day for the Cardinals, a single and now a home run from Dennis DeBanning to put them on the board and score the first run for either team. Rempel has an 0-2 count, or 2-0 count here. Now it's 2-1, as Souls battles back to find the strike zone. So here you go, you got a one-run game on your hands for the Barry Baycats. And definitely seeing that activity increase down in the Baycats bullpen here. As Rempel gets a high one to the right field himself. Right for looking at this one, it's gonna go off the Admiral Industrial sign. Rempel's on his horse going to second. He's stopping there with a double. A two-out double by Tanner Rempel. And the Cardinals aren't done here in the seventh inning. Yeah, very well hit ball there from Tanner Rempel. I thought that maybe even had a chance itself, but it hits right off the base of the wall. It takes a hard hop to the left. Nice extra base hit. We've seen a lot of balls go off that Adwell Industrial sign in right center field this year. Of course, Tyler Duncan's caught a few baseballs off of there as well. Yeah, and it is a chain link fence underneath all those. Uh, Banners, so you you get the weird hops if you hit a pole or you hit the chain yep. link, it dies. Yeah, exactly. But uh, taking full advantage there as he gets an extra base hit and uh, another runner in scoring position here for Hamilton. Let's see if the uh, floodgates can open for them. Charlie Towers now the batter. Two away here in the Cardinals' seventh inning. As Towers wears that one off the shoulder by the looks of it, he'll take his way down to first. Yeah, just clipped the inside of him there as he gets aboard doing his job. It's the third hit batter of the afternoon for Souls. Runners at first and second now with two away for the top of the Cardinals order and Brandon Nicholson. Oh boy, would it be nice for Brandon Nicholson to come through in a situation like this. Yeah, Nothing Nick like endearing yourself to a new fan base, but being a, coming up with a clutch base hit. 100% one run may not be enough in this ball game. Could certainly use some insurance Nicholson takes strike one here on the inside part of the plate. Nicholson 0 for 3 today with a strikeout. Batting just 190 since joining the Cardinals. Definitely not as high as he wants that average to be. That one misses outside. Nicholson, of course, uh, once he's able to get on base, is an absolute menace on the pass. Able to steal a lot of bases. He's got 13 this season. 13 this season, 48 last year for the new league record. It was unbelievable. Every time he seemed to get on base, it was like, especially when you were working with various teams, you look up and he's like, oh, he's right in second base already. What did he do? Stole another base. He's working with a 1-1 count for Emma Souls here in this situation. As Souls comes to the stretch, 1-1 pitch on its way. Lined up the middle by Brendan Nicholson, and that's going to get the wave here. The runner will get the wave home. Ejo holds on to the ball and wisely throws it back into second base as Brendan Nicholson does exactly what the doctor ordered here. The Cardinals lead this one 2 nothing on the RBI single by Brandon Nicholson. Yeah, Nicholson with his first hit of the day. A nice single up the middle to score. Tanner Rempel from second base. Smart play there from Charlie Towers to be careful at second. If he had went to third there, he would have got caught in a rundown. Would have been the end of the rally. 
Kyle Plumpton coming back out here to up. just stall for time a little bit as the Baycats bullpen is getting checked on in a hurry down here. Might have changed their mind as far as the idea. It looks like Adam Kahn is ready to go down there at any time, but they might have to change the script here and go to somebody else. Well, the Cardinals got close so many times today and uh, weren't able to cash it in. Finally, able to string some hits together and uh, get to Souls. Well, you could always feel like every time they got run better runners on base here, it was just a matter of time. It's just just missing something or getting an unfortunate strike three call because guys are just trying to be a little more patient, patient at the plate here. But they finally got one to connect here. And of course, they got the home run and then they get the the clutch RBI single by Nicholson to lead this one 2 nothing. As Clayton Keyes takes ball one inside here and I thought as soon as that went didn't break, I was like, he's going to get hit again. It's just ball one now to Clayton Keyes. That one misses outside. Looks like Souls is definitely, definitely tired. Definitely feeling the pressure in this situation here. You can see him excelling a little deeper out there as well. Yeah, Keyes getting hit his last time up, and I seriously can't remember the last Sunday game that he wasn't hit. So I'll try to keep that streak alive for you next weekend when you're on your on vacation with your family at the yeah. cottage. Yeah. If he fouls that one away. Evan Souls, pitch number 110 here. He's definitely gassed. He's definitely gone any further than anybody expected in this ballgame. 2-1 Towers. pitch. This Towers leads off second base. That one misses low for ball three, and one now is the count. Clayton Keyes has come through with so many times with clutch hits in this situation. We'd love to get another one here. Here's the 3-1. Takes it high for ball number four, and Keyes will make his way down to first. Keyes finally earns that call on the outside. He did a good job of staying relatively patient in a, in a game like this. You can't get too frustrated. Of a pitching change as jo manager Joff Matlow will come out to get the ball for his pitcher and probably give him a very sound pat on the back for a hell of a ball game pitcher from Evan Souls, that's for sure. Looks like Adam Kahn coming into the game now for the Bait Cats, the right hander. Yes, Kahn has definitely been put into this situation many, many times so far. Yeah. Of course, he was at UBC as part of the UBC team as they went for their NCAA championships. Adam Kahn making his 11th appearance of the season, a 4.5 ERA in, in 18 innings pitched, 13 yep. strikeouts, and eight walks to his name. Of course, the Baycats pitching, uh, pitching staff ERA coming into this ball game was 483. Of course, they're going to lower that a little bit, but that's the lowest in the league there. The Cardinals above the six, 672 mark when they came into action today. That'll drop a little bit. Should this whole lead the way hold the way it is? Of course, if you're just tuning in, the Cardinals have struck for two runs here in the bottom of the seventh inning. The solo blast by Dennis Dave Anning that almost killed my voice on that call, <laughs> but that's okay. And of course, Brendan Nicholson with a clutch two out single up the middle for the two nothing score. As Adam Kahn will be the batter, or sorry, the pitcher right there now. Adam Kahn gonna have to uh, get the Bait Cats out of this one, give themselves a chance to come back. From this two nothing deficit, Con six foot four, Aurora Ontario native, going into his second season with the Baycats after he played for University of British Columbia Thunderbirds. Another BC native, a uh, couple on the Cardinals as well, with Rempel and Duncan, I believe. Exactly. Well, he'll have to face Tyler Duncan here. Who Tyler Duncan is not, not going to be an easy out here. That is all three. I mean, Adam Con, you just got to be very mindful of what you do here. Maybe you load the bases in this situation to take your chances. It's quite possible. Yeah, Tyler it's Duncan, Duncan or coming up. Like I don't know if, if that was the plan here. I don't know why it would even. I would have left the uh, souls and done the intentional walk sign, yeah. then brought Cole in to face Bernardo and Niles. But again, you mind you, Luis Bernardo is not a slouch either, and I'm pretty sure that Niles uh, Bernardo has got a home run off of Con so far this year. Yeah, I think you're right. So maybe. Uh, 
I think he got the homer last Sunday or last Saturday in, in that very late four loss. Or sorry, the yeah, it was eight, eight, it was in there. Sorry, Barry was seven to four. Sorry, then they lost eight to four to Toronto the, the following Sunday, and of course. Losing the heartbreaker to the Kitchener Panthers after leading that ball game 8-2, losing that one 14-11 to those deadly Panthers from Kitchener. See if Tyler Duncan can uh, lace one over that wall out there. He's tied for the league lead in home runs with nine on the season. Of course, three of those coming in his last two games. He's definitely a streaky hitter when it comes to home runs. He takes ball one here from Adam Kahn. Perfect conditions for Tyler Duncan right now. A little bit of a win going out to right field. That's his favorite place to put the ball part, the ball in this part. That's definitely sure. right between those two light posts and right center and right. He chops this one to the second base. It's going to be a tough play. Bobble, but throwing it off the line. He's going to be safe. Another run will come in. That'll be an E on the the first baseman on, or sorry, the second baseman on the throw. E four will be the play. Run comes home. Duncan won't get the RBI. But he does his job and brings another run here for the Cardinals to lead this one 3 0. Yeah, you can chalk that one up to good hustle on all accounts for the Cardinals there. Charlie Towers coming home, running hard with two outs, and it certainly paid off there for Tyler Duncan. That'll be an unearned run charge to Evan Souls on that play. It makes it 3 0. So now Tyler, or sorry, uh, Luis Bernardo getting a chance of his own with the bases loaded as he hits one into right center. Not deep enough, though, the right fielder. Maves will make the catch to end the inning. Maves with the catch, but the Cardinals do strike for three runs here in the seventh inning. And now they just went 3-0 as they head to the top of the eighth inning here on Hamilton Cardinals TV on Cable 14. So Tyler so. Duncan comes through with that third return from no RBI on the play because it was an error that allowed the runner to get on board. There, that last run is unearned, charged to Evan Soul. Soul's day is done. He gives up three runs. Not a lot of hits allowed against him either. Did it get up into the, over the 100 pitch mark? And Corbin Peters is going to take over here for the Cardinals. Colby Ring's day is done. He goes seven complete innings, shuts down the Barry Baycats, holds him just one hit. Very impressive. You, you just don't expect that after you see uh, what he had did in his previous performance. And uh, I, if I'm not mistaken, that's his longest game uh, or longest outing all season. Yeah, I think actually he equals the set longest outing. I think, he went, you know, I think he went seven against the Leafs the first time he faced him as well. Okay. But they had a, lot, a few more runs off him, a lot more hits off him. But Colby Ring didn't look like he had his best stuff, but he, he was able, able to get through this inning. Give us seven innings in this ball game and give the Cardinals an yeah. opportunity to win this ball game now. Any they team you can hold... Uh, to one hit through seven innings in the IBL is incredibly impressive. Well, exactly, especially when it's such a predominantly a pitcher's league. The final totals for Kit Colby Ring, seven innings pitched, one hit allowed, no runs, just two walks, two strikeouts. Of course, Evan Souls definitely went to battle with him as well. Souls final line is six and two thirds, four hits allowed, three runs, two are earned, three walks, six strikeouts. Evan Souls pitched like he was pitching in the first half of the season when he was so dominant out of the bullpen. He comes in a spot duty here for the Bay Area Bay Cats and gave him everything he could today. But just unfortunately his offense behind him without able to get anything going here against Colby Ring. So now Corbin Peters, the righty coming into the game, making his 13th appearance of the season. He's got a two and two record with a 5.14 ERA. 26 strikeouts and just eight walks. So a very good ratio there. Indeed. Corbin Peters throws very hard with his fastball. Able to get a lot of swing and misses on that. Of course, the Cardinals in the seventh inning sent nine batters to the plate, scored three runs, and broke this scoreless tie. Again, thank you so much for tuning in on Cable 14, wherever you may be watching. On a lot of the Barry Baycats fans are definitely tuned in in cottage country and around the areas. And again, thank you for allowing us to come up last weekend and be your guest there to score a game up there. We had a lot of fun. Hope to do it again sometime soon. But just give us a little more notice next time. <laughs> yeah. I think they're actually uh, there on this Thursday, right? Yeah, they're up there Thursday. But yeah, I'm busy this week, I think. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but it's a great ballpark. If you get a chance to go to Vantage Throne Park, definitely come out here. We hope a lot more people will come down to Hamilton and take in some ball games. Of course, last week we set a new record attendance. Right? We'll 
this place was booming, that's for sure. It was well over 1,300 people in here, and yeah. you could you could tell because it was loud. It was loud, and it was just like even like the Lane Renaud said, it was just so different to hear a roar behind as he made a play. We had a great stop. You just seen a couple claps, but it was a giant roar yeah. behind him. It was so nice to hear. This one's fouled away, and Peters makes the count one and two here. Great reaction from the kid in the bleachers. They're able to get out of the way of that. Now he's going to chase the baseball and get himself a souvenir. Yeah. Corbin Peters is tasked with just keeping this ball at status quo. Do his job, pitch the eighth inning, and you know who's coming up in the ninth inning. Mm -hmm. Should this score hold the way it is? One two pitch from Peters. Is chopped up the middle. Nicholson charging hard. He'll make the catch. Not going to get the speedster down the line, though. Yeah, It'll just be an infield single. That ball was chopped high in the air here. Yeah, just no chance for either fielder on that one. Too much speed on the high hopper. Kyle took Davis way too long. Got the infield single to start the eighth inning. Ball okay. just took way too long to come down to them. Josh Cote will pinch hit here now. Cote th batting 311 on this season. 23 hits in 74 at bats. Cote has got the known to get a little extra pop in that bat here as the Baycats are going all out here trying to cut this lead down. Cote lines this one in the left field off Peters. And it's runners at first and second now to start the eighth inning with nobody away. Back to back singles. Although be it the last one was unconventional, this one they definitely earned as Cote was waiting on that fastball from Peters and they got it. Bernardo goes out to have a conversation with Peters and says, hey, maybe we had to mix it up a little more as Owen Jansen will be the batter. Jansen, who had the only hit off from Colby Ring, that was in the third inning. Man, it seems like a ball game ago. Yeah, the Baycats finally starting to get something going here. Their second and third hits of the game, both coming in this half inning. Jansen looking to keep that going and stay out of a double play if he can. That one's in there for a strike. Nice breaking ball. Baycats don't have a lot of time. They're west between games, three days, three games and three nights there for the Baycats. They got a makeup game against the Kitchener Panthers. Tomorrow night, 7.30 at Jack Couch Park. We'll be on the broadcast with Mark Perry to get you through that ball game as well. So Baycat fans, my apologies. You're going to have to listen to that guy again. Another well-placed pitch. Bernardo, the catcher, liked that one, but didn't get the call that they would like. Counts one or one now. Nobody away. Baycats at first and second. Nobody away. Infield on the corners is in. Up the middle, we're at double play depth looking to turn this one. Give Corbin Peters a couple outs any way they can here. Peters from the stretch. The 1-1 pitch. It's driven right at the second baseman. Flipped from Towers to shortstop. Nicholson over to first. That's bobbled by Rempel. They'll get the fielder's choice. Runners at first and third now with one away as Corbin Peters will go back to work. Yeah, Cardinals defense would have loved to have that one. It was a great play on the ground there from the second baseman, Charlie Towers. Not an easy hop for him. He's able to flip it on to second to Nicholson, and the throw wasn't terrible from Nicholson, just a little bit on the outside, and Rempel had a tough time uh, yeah, just hauling it couldn't hold in. on to that one, unfortunately. Yeah, he went off his glove. At least runner able to, or they're able to hold the runner at third. They get the first out. Cote's retired on the fielder's choice. 4-6. Owen Jansen's at first, and Kyle, Kyle Mavis is at third now. And Peters pounds the strike zone here against Nolan McGarry Doyle. But yeah, Rempel fortunate enough to get a glove on that one, at least stop the ball from going over away and probably saving a run. No question he did there. He did a good job of keep, on, keep his feet with it. This one's in the dirt. McGarry Doyle thought about swinging it. This is outside to even the count at one and one. And yeah, McGarry Doyle holding up the runner at third who thought about maybe coming home, but Bernardo keeping it just close enough. Stefan Strucker getting loose down in the Cardinals bullpen. Looks like we got somebody down there, probably Brandon Hiller or somebody down there. Brad Grievison is down there for the Baycats, my correction. I'm corrected. Thank you so much for Nate. Seeger, our official scorer, for filling in the dots there for us. Nice fastball on the outside half there from Corbin Peters. Looking to follow it up now, one and two. Here's the one, two. This is low. Good stop by Bernardo to keep the runners where they are. It's two and two now. One of the biggest things last season was a lot of wild pitches and pass balls.
from the Cardinals, and they have more than solved that issue with yep. uh, Luis Bernardo behind the plate. They got the themselves plate. a Bernardo back there. It was a St. Bernard back there, really. It just yeah. blocks everything and catches everything. St. Bernardo. I think I like that. Strike three called. Noel McGarry Doyle retired. Peters gets a huge out here as there's two away Just a in the Bay Cats eighth inning. It's a fantastic breaking ball there from Corbin Peters. Absolutely froze. McGarry Doyle able to get the second out as he goes down looking. BC Joe will be the batter now. He's 0 for 3 in the contest. Struck out, flown up to right field and popped up for the Bernardo in the sixth inning. The Cardinals offense, has done, or the Cardinals pitching staff has done a number against this very good hitting ball club. Mm -hmm. Ejo takes a swing on the miss on that one. On the called strike. He's asking if it was on the swing. The umpire nods his head. Yes, it was. And Ejo behind the counter, 0-1. Oh, Bernardo gets him to chase the fastball high in the zone. And Ejo behind the counter, 0-2 oh, now. As that one's going... Well to the track stadium over there. Kids looked up and looked up at the top of the stands and said, okay, that's over the two fences. I can't get to it on time. I'm going to stay where I am. Yeah, Peter's definitely not one to shy away from the strike zone. Loves to pound it in there and put balls in play. It does lead to a couple hits once in a while, but yep. with that uh, speed of that fastball, he gets more strikeouts than he gives up hits. Here's the 0-2 pitch from Peters. Misses high for a ball. Runner gets the stolen base. As he was going on the play anyways, just to avoid the force out of second base. Yeah, Baycats <coughs> looking to try some trickery there, hoping to get a throw over to from second and try and score a run on maybe a wild throw. Bernardo a little bit too smart. Peters will work with a one and two count now with runners at first and, or sorry, second and third now with two away. One, two pitch. Swung on and missed. Peters does the job. Baycats strand a pair of runners. Cardinals leads this one 3 nothing as we head to the home half of the eighth inning here on, on Cable 14. Corbin Peters very fired up as he always is coming off the mound, ending that inning with a strikeout two in the inning. Well, now if you're the Barry Baycats, you know who's coming up in the ninth inning for you and you know who you're going to have to face out there. So you're probably looking at that. You just probably lost your golden opportunity to score a few runs here. The Starling Rodriguez will lead things off in the ninth inning. Not to look ahead that far ahead here. Do have the Cardinals who batted around in the seventh inning and got three runs across. Of course, Dennis DeBenny broke the scoreless tie with a solo blast. Brendan Nicholson came through with a two-out single. And, of course, Charlie, and then Charlie Towers scored the last run on the error on Tyler Duncan. So they're back up in the bird's nest. I'm Neil Shrewastwa. That's my partner, Jarrett Matthews. Thank you so much for being with us on your Sunday afternoon. It's been a great ball game so far. A real pitcher's duel through seven innings. The Bay Cats and Cardinals locked in a yet another battle here. Of course, so each team will face each other six times. The season series right now is tied at two apiece. Of course, home field advantage, should these teams finish tied in the standings, will go to the team and won the, the season series as well. So. The Cardinals looking to just pad the lead a little bit here in this eighth inning and give themselves some runs as yeah, Adam Kahn goes back out to work here. Yeah, we talked about the uh, three-game slide for the Cardinals, desperately needing a win today, and they're in line for one right now if they can just hold on to this three-run lead, pitch oh, exactly. uh, and play the way they've been playing, and it's going to be good enough. Of course, every time they play the Baycats in the eighth inning, it's, something's always gone well for these Cardinals in the eighth inning against the Baycats, so they're hoping a little luck, a little, that, keep, that trend continues here in this home half of the eighth inning. Mm -hmm. As they definitely have blown up some ball games here in the eighth inning. Of course, that first game in Barry, they won that game basically on the strength of the eighth inning. And of course, when they came back here the following Sunday, they won that ball game. They were down six nothing at one point, rallied back and won that game 11-8, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's right. And uh, another great crowd today here at Bernie Arbor. It turned out to be a beautiful day after we. Had maybe a chance of rain earlier, but uh, yeah. nothing happening. And it's the humidity is definitely feeling. You can feel it in the air. It's, the air is a little heavier, but hey, it's not a bad bait ball to be in the ballpark. That's for sure. The clouds have definitely covered up the sky a little more now. The sun's gone behind it, so it's cooling down a little bit. Got a little bit of a breeze, and Josh Niles will be the batter here to face Adam Con in the on the eighth inning. Again, three nothing to score. The Cardinals leading. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Yeah, 90s day at the ballpark, as we talked about earlier. Another guy at the plate here was born after the turn of the century. 
Every time I hear the word 90s, I get reminded of myself of a song. You probably never heard of this band, but it's a little Ontario band called Moxie Fruvis. They had a King of Spain as their, you know, one of their big songs back in the day. It was kind of an indie kind of pop rock band and everything else, but they also had Stuck in the 90s was one of their songs, too. I just remember that song, so you have to go Google that one tonight. You're probably yeah, well. laughing. You go, what the heck were you talking about? But, yeah, they had all the 90s references, kind of like the Billy Joel had We Didn't Start the Fire. This one was kind of based on the 90s, like Game Boys and various other things that were Can very Canadiana as well. Because now it says a 1-1 one -one count here. Now it takes a ride here on the right field, but the right fielder will be there. He'll camp underneath this for out number one, and now is retired for the first of the inning. Yeah, Josh just getting under that ball a little bit. Dennis DeBanning with the, the the man who broke the goose egg with a very loud home run in the end of the seventh inning on the yeah, solo DeBanning, blast. DeBanning with the walk-up song called Rags to Riches, and uh, that was definitely the case's last at bat. He was, was. 0-4. Uh, Look at you with the, the good riches. segues today. I know. Definitely been doing your homework. Oh, and misses high for ball number one here to the Banning. Khan with a 450 ERA, so as you mentioned already, 18 innings pitched, 13 Ks. Pitched two thirds of an inning so far. The Banning fouls this one away. It was a nice opposite field home run his last time up. He does like going off with Taco a fair bit. This. Yeah, that was his 13th RBI of the season, fourth home run. Very respectable numbers. Two home run hitting, two two home run games now, back to back games. As he fouls that one off to stay alive at one and two. Well, we mentioned the Bay Cats will play again tomorrow night against the Kitchener Panthers. Cardinals are off till Thursday. Mm -hmm, that's right. In Barry. Yeah. So to close up the season series against the Bay Cats. Yeah, and they'll be back at home on Friday, and then uh, another Sunday home game. That's actually a makeup game yep. we talked about earlier. Guelph Royals will be here. That'll be the first time I see the Guelph Royals all year, which is kind of interesting because I, I come from Guelph. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to go to Hastings Stadium at all this summer, so I've been busy working other ball games and other ballparks. Stefan Strecker making his way into the dugout. Looks he's like he's good ready to warm. go. Yeah. And this is warm-ups, and now he's just in the mindset to go shut down these Baycats in the ninth inning. As the batting fouls this one off to stay alive again. It's really a two still. There is one away here in the eighth inning. Cardinals leading this one 3 nothing. All the runs being scored in the bottom of the seventh inning. A pitcher's a very tight ball game into the seventh inning when Evan Soule just ran out of gas. Unfortunately, made a couple of mistakes on a few pitches. And the batting will take another walk down at first. A well-earned block by Dennis DeBanning. The Cardinals got a runner here in the eighth inning. Connor Bowie with the batter now, his second time up since entering the ball game for the ejected Jordan Schoenfeld. Bowie 0 for 1. Bay Cats, no runs, three hits, one error to this point. The Cardinals, three runs, four hits, no errors to this point. Oh, he takes this one low for ball number one from Khan. The Banning, as you mentioned, has got some good wheels over there. Don't think they want to run themselves out of an inning here, but they definitely want to avoid the double play if they can here. Absolutely. You can actually hit it behind Bowie. The Banning hits this one at the middle, and that's exactly what Bowie does. The Banning on his horse, he's going to third. The throw is going to be cut off by the shortstop. The Banning slides in head first to third. Burrs at first and third now with one away for the Cardinals. Very nicely executed hit and run there by the Cardinals. DeBanning taking off and a perfectly placed hit there from Bowie up the middle. DeBanning able to reach third base and be 90 feet away. I don't think he could have drawn that one up any better there in that situation. They got the ball up the middle there from Kahn and he just did a great job of hitting and DeBanning with the great read on that, that hit and run. And was able to make his way to third without a throw. Tanner Rempel with that big double off the wall his last time up. Just the fifth hit for the Cardinals in this ballgame. And just the eighth hit overall. Yeah, these last, this last inning and a half certainly doesn't tell the whole story of this game. It was very quiet up until 
That three run, bottom of the seventh. Well, the Cardinals just kept threatening and threatening, just couldn't get anything going. Mm -hmm. And they finally got a couple of big knocks. The home run kind of just put everybody else to take a big, deep breath, relax, and just go back to hitting the baseball the way you have been. As Rempel takes, took ball one. 1-0 one -oh pitch is in there for strike number one, even the count at 1-1. One -oh -one. Rempel and the, the fans not liking that call too much for the play down fire. Yeah, you see a couple times tonight, Cardinals batters get a called strike on them and immediately look over at their own dugout like, oh boy, that's oh, what you we were talking again. about. Yeah. That was high for a ball. It's 2-1. and one. Good job holding that bat back. He didn't accidentally foul that one off. That's happened more times than most people admit to or like yeah. to see happening too, just because they leave the bat over the, the strike zone and it makes contact with it. Or you see it once in a while, they get the bat on the shoulder and it hits them behind them. Yep. You know, what do you mean I hit that ball? As Rempel hits this one down the line, pass to Diamond Rodriguez. That's going to score the fourth Cardinals run as Tanner Rempel delivers another RBI single. It's Cardinals finally being rewarded for some well-hit balls. They were just finding gloves all game, and now they're finally to getting in those areas where nobody is. Charlie Towers will bat here with runners at first and second and just one away. Left side of the infield looks like it's playing in here. Tower. First baseman's behind the, first, the runner. Towers hitless today, was hit by a pitch and reached his last time up. Towers takes a tough call for strike number one. He got hit by a pitch, scored the run last inning. Takes the ball high to even the count at one and one from Kahn. This is low. Yeah, I think I looked at my schedule this week. I'm in Kitchener tomorrow, London Wednesday, London Friday, so I'll miss the Friday night baseball game, unfortunately. That was agreed to upon way, way, way before. Yeah. Their uh, official scorers in England, so I'll be doing the next, I think, next three Friday night games in London, plus a Wednesday night game and I think a Tuesday night game. It's always a nice time to go to Lovat Park. That one's going to drop in for a base hit. Nobody, everybody's going to get a one base here. That's a base hit. That one just went to no man's land. Noel Miguel or Joel tried his best to go flat out to get that baseball. But unfortunately, it just dropped in front of him. Charlie Towers with the Texas Leaguer. And the bases are loaded for the top of the order. And Brandon Nicholson, who came through with an RBI single his last time up. Activity yeah. continuing in down there as Brad Grievison looks like he's definitely increasing the, the amount of throws down there. It looks like he's ready to go. Should it be needed? Josh Cote and Adam Kahn trying to get on the same page here. Probably some reminders here. Of course, next home game for the Cardinals is Friday night. We hope to have you guys come and join us either on Cable 14 or live in person here at Barber and Ivory Stadium. If you want to buy your tickets online, you can go to the Hamlin Cardinals website and purchase them through there. And we'd love to see you at the ballpark. Absolutely. We are going to be back here on Sunday against the Wolf Royals, as we mentioned. But Jarrett will be away. I think Chris Lazar and Reed Death definitely will have the call on Friday for you. Yeah, I that think was you're the right. plan, anyways. We'll miss you next Sunday. Absolutely. I hope I don't have to fly solo, but if I have to, I'll, I'll do my best. Yeah, maybe, maybe I'll have just call get a in. Maybe I'll get a cardboard cutout or something of you just here <laughs> yeah. with a big sign. Yeah. We would get like a little box and you just hit the buttons, uh, different <laughs> sayings. Yeah, there we go. That works. Khan gets a quick early 0-2 oh, yes. count to Nicholson here. Just one away, bases loaded for the Cardinals here in the eighth inning as they threaten to blow this one even further open. It's now 4 nothing. Nicholson gives this one a ride deep to left field. It's going to go off the top of the fence. That's going to score two. Three runners making their way around the base here. One, two, three are going to score. Brandon Nicholson with a three-run trip. Double. And the Cardinals now lead this one 7 nothing. What a great jump on the bases by all those runners there. They were almost jammed up at third base. They <laughs> were probably only, jam. what, 20 feet apart from each other. It looked crossing. like the 403 on a Friday afternoon as I'm trying to get to this ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> That's very accurate. Brandon Nicholson. Definitely feeling like Brandon Nicholson of old after that as he cleared the bases with a triple or a double there. 
And like we mentioned, those three runners coming home, one, two, three in a hurry. I thought they were going to run into each other almost. So and Nicholson, it would have been the 4-0-3. Nicholson finally breaking the silence there. Now up to four RBIs on the day. Big day for him. Then our, then our eighth inning, the Bay Cats want to forget against the Cardinals here. Oh, boy. <laughs> These last two, very forgettable. It's definitely the Sundays they definitely don't want to be here. The Fridays, not so much, because they, they won the Friday night game, 5-3. Yeah, we were pretty much spot on with the, uh, once the starter gets out, floodgates open for the yeah, Cardinals. Well, just to be able to finally relax, because Sewell's had him off balance so much, and Khan's not doing oh, anything yeah. wrong. He's, just, he's definitely got a different approach and different fastball here. His fastball doesn't move as much as Sewell's does. This seems kind of doesn't have that run, as they say. It just stays flat. Hasn't been a great day for Clayton Keyes so far, but he does have a runner in scoring position here, a chance to redeem himself. Swung on and missed, and Keyes finds himself behind the count at one and two now. Keyes a little mad with himself. We'll take a second. He's going to adjust his batting gloves. His helmet's going to collect his thoughts and then go back in there and try to do something productive with his bat. Just one away here. Nicholson still at second base, waiting to be ca 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 cashed in by somebody here. Words are hard sometimes. Yeah, still just one out for the Baycats. This one's skied high in the outfield. Center fielder charging hard. Nicholson. Nicholson's going to tag, but it's not going to... And a fake a run of the throw goes to third. Ijo with the laser beam cut off by Rodriguez at shortstop to hold Nicholson. Two away now for Tyler Duncan. Duncan, Duncan singled in the first inning and reached base on it by a hit by pitch in the fourth inning. Grounded out to the third base from the sixth inning, reached in the seventh on an error for the Cardinals' third run. As an opportunity to make another dent in this. Impressive resume this so far this season. And bring home another run. It is 7 0 Cardinals now. Nicholson goes on the pitch. Duncan fouls that one away. I don't think they're on the same page. I think Nicholson was going on his own there, but Duncan, Duncan had to do his best just to get a piece of that one there. Yeah, if you're Nicholson, why not, right? You got exactly. the speed and all the tools to get the base. You're the up third 7 0. Where, where the third baseman was exactly. playing is way been. behind the bag. He could have just gone there. We're going to get a throw down on him. I think Duncan didn't read that one going through and just found a pitch in the wheelhouse and took a hack at it. Yeah, there might not have even been a throw over here with two outs and just trying to get Duncan. That one misses outside, even the count at one and one. But Duncan's mustache is definitely on point. If it was, if it was the 80s, 90s, I'd say that's the Tom Selleck, but <laughs> yeah. it's not the Tom Selleck. I mean, it's the Tom Selleck from Friends, maybe the 90s, and that's okay. There you go. There we go. We can still reference it back to 90s. Yeah, how many more 90s references can we squeeze in as this one's pounded to center field? And it's off the wall, bounces on the warning track. Tyler Duncan rounding second. He's headed to third, and he's going to get another triple for himself. He's no stranger to those. His fourth triple of the season. And the car it drives him down a run. It's now 8 nothing for the Cardinals. Is Brandon Nicholson going to walk home after that one? Yeah, well, I thought that had a chance to get out at first, but any other ballpark but here, that's gone yeah. in this league. Unfortunately, it's 400 feet to center field in this ballpark, so Duncan has a habit of hitting it to the hardest part, the deepest part of this yard here unless he goes to right field. But the Cardinals now make it 8-0, and, well, I don't think it's Stefan Strecker coming out next inning now. No, you're right. I think it's going to be somebody, somebody else. else. Save him for, to, for uh, Thursday, maybe. Yeah. As Luis Bernardo will bat now with Tyler Duncan at third base. Bernardo takes ball one low here. Eight nothing. What a difference a couple innings can make here. It was 0 0 going into the seventh inning before the Cardinals' bats exploded all over here on the Baycats. Yeah, they Three were runs in the seventh inning, five here so far in the eighth, and they're not done. That one misses outside, and the Bernardo's got a 2 0 count to his favor. Yeah, they were held to just one hit for the longest time, and now there's just three Cardinals on the in the rotation here that uh, haven't got a hit yet, Bernardo being one of them. He's just waiting for his chance here. Adam Cotton has unfortunately had a rough eight, eighth inning here. Bernardo fouls that one away, it's now two and one. Well, so much for that one run game we were talking about earlier. Well, who knew? 
But you had, to, you had that feeling that the Cardinals were so close so many times in those early age, early, early innings against Souls, mm -hmm. and when the, they finally got Souls out of the bullpen, it's just been a different, night, a different ball game here. Bernardo watches that one low. It's three and one. Luis Bernardo as a catcher, you know, he's probably looking back at the umpire, going, "I'm not getting that call. So you, sh you shouldn't give it, give it, take it against me here, too." Mm -hmm. Three-one pitch from Con to Bernardo. Is low for ball four, and Bernardo will take a walk. He didn't look too happy about it, but he's going to make his way down. I think he was just checking with the umpire, too, calling time here. So, so he takes off the stuff, off the extra equipment off here. The elbow pad, the, the ankle guard, and whatever else they want to call it, the power pad these days. It's not the power glove. That was from the 90s. <laughs> Up until this inning, this game was absolutely flying along, and uh, yeah, that's no, what it's happens. Yeah, it's kind of gone back to a typical baseball game in the IBL. Yeah, we're at about 2 hours, 20 minutes right now. Without this rally, this game could have been over in two hours. Well, exactly. Well, last week, the game in the Bay against the Baycats was two hours and 26 minutes. There you go. That Saturday, Saturday afternoon, it's like, hey, they were, they were Baycats. Uh, press guys were all complaining. Yeah, we just about three hours or something. I get up there, like, you've got to come back. Yeah. It's two hours and 26 minutes. We're going home. This one's chopped to the shortstop. Rodriguez up with a flip to second for the four set to get Bernardo. The end of the inning mercifully. Cardinals scoring five runs in the inning. Now lead this one 8-0. You're watching Hamilton Cardinals ball, baseball on Cable 14. Yeah, another great performance put on by Hamilton here for the home crowd. Going to improve their record at home to 9-4 and four on the season. It's a great sign if you're a, a baseball fan in Hamilton and you're thinking about maybe checking out a game. Odds are if you come here, they're going to win. So. Yeah, exactly. We're at the top of the ninth inning here in the Bird's Nest. I'm Neil Shirwastava. That's Jared Matthews. Thank you so much for being with us here on your Sunday afternoon. Jared, it's been a heck of a ball game. Tail of two ball games. The first seven innings, really tight ball game. And after that, the Cardinals just lowered the boom on the Baycats, scoring eight runs in the last two innings to make this one 8 nothing. Yeah, absolutely. We saw just one run for each team through the first six innings. And uh, Colby Ring putting on an excellent performance, going seven scoreless, giving up just the one hit. Well, and uh, you got to think he's the player of the game at this time. I would think so. Definitely would be. Stefan Strecker, I guess he warmed up. He's probably said, you know what, I'm already loose. Might as well go and throw the ninth inning here. Yeah, what's the worst that could happen here with well, an let's not say, Let's not go the worst case scenario because I think Stefan Strecker will kill us both after that one. Yeah. That's still. But Stefan Strecker's on there. So you're for the Barry Bay Cats. You know, you're in for a tough inning here against the, the IBL legend of 18, a 19-year career. That's He's definitely hanging the spurs up at the end of this one. But... He's definitely going to ride out in the sunset on a high note here, that's for sure. Yeah, he's going to want to uh, keep that ERA low, and he has so far this season, one of the lowest on the team. Strecker with a 1-8-0 ERA, 1-0 record. Looking yep. to keep that real low for the rest of the season and to put a stamp on a just wow. remarkable career. You can't really compare it to much of anything. There's nothing much else you can go out through. I don't, I, I've looked through the record books over the years and going, I don't think I've ever seen anybody dominate that the league this as well as Stefan Strucker has over a 19-year span. You might have guys like Gabe Rebus that played with Strucker and Granford and everything else do it for three or four years, but then they go on to do something else or they hang them up. But Strucker's been out there and year after year, whatever called upon, he's been lights out for so many ball clubs. And his name just precedes him. You go out there and then you go, you see him on the mound with that hair, and it's just like, oh man. I most want to get him to throw batting practice one day just to step in. I'm not going to swing at it. I just want to see how it looks like from that eye level. Yeah. Of course, he's been up to the press box a couple times with Reed Duffery and ourselves up the one line, the one time during that rain, uh, the umpire delay. But yes, just a great guy, a constant professional. Yeah, we're going to see a good matchup here for his first at bat and Ryan Rio stepping to the plate. And that's probably why he's coming out here as Rios, and they don't want to send. You don't want to send some young kid against Ryan Rios in this situation to go, by the way, you got an 8 nothing lead. Just don't give it to them. Don't, don't let Rios kill the baseball here. We've had him we've had him controlled so far in this contest, so you want him to get the job. The Starling Rodriguez will lead the ball game, uh, lead the inning at the top of the ninth off here. As we mentioned, the, the Cardinals leading this one 8 nothing. Take a quick glance at the other out of town scoreboard as well. Of course, the Panthers and Brantford Red Sox are the 5-15 start in Kitchener. It's bottom of the seventh inning in Toronto. Jackfish and Maple Leafs still tied at four apiece. 
Another low scoring affair there, but I'm sure that ballpark is definitely packed with Jackfish fans and Toronto fans alike. Jackfish do send a good contingent of fans around the league. For sure. Zerker's pitch is in there, and the count is even at one and one. Yeah, coming into this game, I was talking about the run differential between these two teams, and Hamilton just led it in the first four games, 23 to 21. That being flipped on its head, of course, today. Of course, when it comes down to a tiebreaker, if it comes into a situation like that where they're tied in the standings, of course, the first tiebreaker is the head-to-head -head record, and then it's the run differential between the teams that are in the in, the, in those that head-to-head -head record as well. So yeah, very that important. bodes well for the Cardinals if they, it winds up with a 3-3 tie. Definitely, and we got a. Pijo didn't game. like that call. He dropped the bat. And now he's doing a little dance. Yeah. He's not making a little love. He's not getting down tonight. No, he's 0 for 3. That's the 70s, though. 0 for 3 today, so he's a little bit frustrated with himself, especially for a guy who bats 325 on the year. Well, I think the Bay Cats as a whole are just well, – that was Rodriguez. It wasn't Ejo. Sorry, my bad. But still, he dropped the bat and chops this one to the shortstop. Nicholson up with it. He's going to throw – oh. Oh. Just go touch first, and it looks like Rodriguez is hurt a little bit on that one, too. Yeah, it looks like he must have pulled a muscle, or he's having a cramp right now. Yeah, that's not good. The trainer is out in a hurry, too, as well. I don't know if the, the helmet got him when it fell off him, and he just I got think clipped. I want to say he buckled his knee or something and was almost mad that he got hurt and threw his helmet down. And Yeah. It's just like it just we'll added, get the a helmet got there. back up there. I'm not sure if we do have a replay or not. Maybe we do. Either way... Not a pretty sight here. No replay today. Dang, we missed that truck today. <laughs> but that been all right, though. Rodriguez looks. But again, shout out to the Kimmel 14 guys and gals for helping us bring you the ball games. Again, the trainer's going to help them walk off the field here. This is not good. If you're the, a Bay Area Baycats fan, of course, the fan of baseball in general, you don't want to see anybody leave the, no. the ball game like that. No, especially Rodriguez. Not especially not a competitor like Rodriguez. Yeah, one tough customer able to hobble off the field under his own power. Now the designated hitter, number 27, Ryan Rios. Ryan Rios will be the batter now. And Looks good like autumn it. for that. He very easily could have just laid there and got some treatment instead. He uh, was Let's able to step. hobble to the bench and let the game continue. Oh, so exactly. respect to that. Exactly. I think he didn't want to slow the pace of the game down anymore. He wants no. to get Rios up there. Give him a chance against Strecker here. Strecker's behind the count 1-0. Oh. That one's inside. And it's 2-0. Oh. Strucker's just trying to keep Rios off the plate. Yeah, I was looking over at the shortstop Nicholson as he was fielding that ball, and and he uh, was. it looked like it might have been a close play He's with Rodriguez's speed, and then all of a sudden he was stopped halfway, I and I see him throw his helmet down. I think he, think he caught it, saw it in the eye, out of the eye there, too, and he's like, oh, and then the throw just kind of got away from Nicholson, too. Big shift on here for Rio. As this oh, one's wow. destroyed. That is long gone. Tyler Duncan not even going to have a look at that. That's a home run for Ryan that Rios. That going straight to unicorn land in a hurry. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan Rios with the solo blast. It's now an 8-1 ball game. Rios not making eye contact with Strecker. Strecker's just going to put his head down and go back to work here in a minute. Rios obliterated that baseball. Yeah, no question about that one. It was out of here in a hurry. Of course, the inside joke is Rios knew I was up in the press box, so he's like he took his his iPad out, out when the Cardinals were coming to take batting practice. And said they want a song. The only song they get is the uh, Pink Fluffy Unicorns Dancing on Rainbows. So that one goes right to it's by special dedication to Ryan Rios. Goes back up to Unicorn Land. Yeah, Rios, seventh home run of the season, 31st RBI. He's having quite the year. He is. He got hot. Just at the right time, it was a guy who mentioned on the broadcast that one Sunday afternoon, just like he, he was just missing on those pitches, and then, well, he didn't miss it all there. That's for sure. I think we can't help but take partial credit for that home run after yeah. saying that he was 0 for 3 <laughs> yeah. coming into there. We did it. Sorry, Steph. But uh, nonetheless, Big Cat's at least able to break the shutout. This one's hit the line to left field, and that's going to drop in for a base hit, and the Big Cats have got some life here with one away. And a runner at first base. As the pinch hitters are coming out in a dozen here. As Maria bats last time. We got a pinch hitter for... Pinch hitting for Barry, number 40, Joshua Tibbetts. Joshua Tibbetts will bat for Hayden Jacko, or Jaco. And yeah, totally jinx the uh, quick game. As yeah, now we've got we a couple rallies we in a row. It. It's us. 
There's one thing you just don't mention is unwritten rules in broadcasting. You don't mention how fast the game's going, and we mm -hmm. blew it way off the top mm -hmm. there. We own it. We're here for a while. There's a ground ball hit to the second. Mickelson will flip the second for one on to first, and a double play, and that's the ball game. Stefan Strecker does the job. Ryan Rios is coming out to shake hands with Stefan Strecker, give him a big hug. That's great camaraderie here. A little tip of the cap and a lot of respect on both sides of the field. The Cardinals win this one 8-1 to one as we come back up here to the bird's nest for the final wrap-up. Cardinals on the ball game. Eight runs, nine hits, no errors. Yeah, Very big cats. One run, five hits, one error. A lot of offense later stages of this ball game, but the first seven innings, Jared Matthews, it was anybody's contest, that's for sure. 100%. And you got to give a lot of credit to both the starting pitchers in today's game, despite how it ended up for Evan Souls. He had a brilliant six innings, and so did uh, Colby Ring. And there you go. You hear over the loudspeaker, Colby Ring, the player of the game, certainly deserves it after no, no coming off a does. subpar performance and uh, able to rate the ship and uh, really the show The final who, line for boss. Souls, again, once again, is six innings, 6.2 innings pitched, four hits, three runs, two are earned, three walks, six strikeouts. Of course, his county part, Colby, Colby Ring, the player of the game, who's down the guy, Colby Ring down there as well. So we'll let her take the interview here. Of course, Ring, seven innings pitched, one hit allowed, two walks, one strikeout, 24 batted face. Didn't have his best stuff, but you know what? He battled all the way through and got the outs he needed to. Yeah, you definitely can't ask for any more from your starting pitcher. He definitely delivered today and able to get off to Schneid, the uh, Hamilton Cardinals uh, ending their three-game losing streak and hoping to start a winning streak. Exactly. Cardinals looking to turn it around. Of course, they go to Barry on Thursday night. That game will be, of course, on Baycats TV at 7.35 p.m. Next home game for the Cardinals is Friday night here back on Cable 14 as they're home against, I can't remember who this is. Is it Welland? Yeah, I think you're right. The Welland Jackfish are here Friday night. So hopefully to join you guys then. If you can't make it to the ballpark, we'll have Jared Matthews and, uh, sorry, Reed Duffy and I think Chris Lugar will have the game for you on Friday night. I'm back in the booth on Sunday as the Guelph Royals will come to town. So thank you so much for watching. Thanks for everybody at Cable 14, and it's been our pleasure. And you guys have yourself a great ball game. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.